Sports Network. This is the GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com drive for the GHSA state title. Friday night's been high school football in Georgia, and tonight the drive for the GHSA state title. Presented by GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com brings us to the stockyard on the campus of Cal High School as the GAC Spartans at 7-0 get ready to take on the Cal Longhorns at 6-1. Hello, everybody. I'm Brandon Adams. Happy to be joined alongside recruiting insider Rusty Manziel. You know, for GAC, 7-0 on the season, yet coming into tonight's game, none of the on three 300 ranked players. You know, this is a team that obviously has a lot of good high school players, yep. but perhaps flying under the radar a bit when it comes to college recruiting. And yet tonight has a chance to take a big-time lead in this region race in Region 6-5A. How do the Spartans get it done? Brandon, we see this every year. One of those teams, things just gel. Things just go together. Things just fit. A characteristic of GAC under Coach Tim Hardy is well-coached physical football teams. When I watch them, I see the same thing. I know why they're undefeated, and I know why they're winning close games. And Tim Hardy says he believes his team's fun to watch this year. It's certainly true. And on the other side, that's especially true for Kell there as well. They're leading 5A and scoring at about 50 points per game, and the catalyst for that is Bryce Clavon. We saw him in our Corky Kell Dave Hunter Classic to begin the season. He then missed three games as with Team USA in baseball. But since he's been back, the Longhorns have been humming. Man, one of those electric players, like hold your breath every play. He makes those highlight films. And you watch him, the decision for baseball, the decision to play football, it says a lot about him to come back and finish off with his senior season at Kale. I think people are in for a treat if you haven't seen him play yet. Every other team in Region 6-5A has already lost at least twice in region play. That means the winner of tonight's game takes a commanding lead for that uh, region championship and eventual number one seed there in the playoffs. So we've got that in store for you. Also a lot of special guests when it comes to our Georgia High School Hall of Fame inductees who are on hand there as well. But next, it's a couple of great coaches. Our Kaylee Manzella is standing by with both of our coaches for tonight's game right now. And welcome all to the U.S. Army pregame show. As always, I am Kaylee Mansell, and with kickoff approaching shortly, it is time for our R.S. Andrews head coach's interview. I am joined by Tim Hardy of Greater Atlanta Christian and Bobby May of Kell High School. Coach Hardy, as you are the visiting coach, you're going to go first. On the way here, you got a chance to talk to your team on the bus, one of the last times that you'll get to address them as a team before tonight. What was the message? What do you hope they got out of it? Well, first of all, we're just excited to be here tonight. What a great night. Uh, much respect to Coach May and his program and just a first-class uh, operations. We're excited to compete. Uh, our guys have prepared well, um, and they're hungry to play, and we're ready for a great night of high school football. Coach May, it feels like not too long ago we watched you lose a very tough one to a tough Parkview team right here at Kell High School. Since then, you've won six straight. What's been the biggest contributor to your success? Well, I mean, I think the, the big thing is that they're a really good team. So, um, but, but I think we've, we've built some depth, and we've, we've been able to create some more balance on offense and defense. And, and we've been able to play a lot of guys and get some experience. And, uh, you know, and then obviously, you know, getting Bryce back in rhythm is huge for us. And Coach Hardy, your team is off to a perfect start for the first time in a few seasons. What makes this team different? You know, we've got a great group of seniors. I know that's a high school cliche, but uh, literally we have 20 of 22 starters back from last year. We were really young, and uh, these guys have worked really hard. They've lifted weights, they've trained, uh, they're very coachable, and they love being together. They love competing together, love working together, and uh, they're playing the game well together. Coach May, a few games ago, we got to see the return of Bryce Clavon, your quarterback. What does he bring to the offense that makes it different? Yeah, I think he's just familiar with the scheme, and, and, and you know, he's obviously an elite passer, and he's an elite athlete, and he's a great leader, you know. And, and it also, Kimari Nick stepped in and, and played quarterback, but allows him to move around a lot, which gives us another weapon on offense. So we're excited to have Bryce back and bring back some balance. So uh, we're hoping for a big night from him tonight. Well, Coach May, Coach Hardy, thank you so much for joining me, but kickoff is coming up soon, so we will be right back after the break. Thanks. Hey, is the power off on this? I don't know. Just take it off. Safety violation, unsafe work conditions. In the construction trades unions, safety is our highest priority, and we train you to recognize and speak out on unsafe working conditions so that everyone arrives and goes home safely. Learn about careers in construction at georgiaconstructioncareers.com. Are you ready to make a difference in your community? The Gwinnett County Sheriff's Office is now hiring with a sign-on bonus of up to $4,700. Begin your career with us today. Explore GoGCSO.com to discover information on tuition reimbursement, paid training, and annual benefits. Are you ready to rise to the call? Go GCSO.
America, come along with our adventure seekers and discover summer with Ford. Join friends Maisa and Leslie on an epic adventure with the capability of the Ford Bronco Sport. Head out with the Stevens family and stay connected with built-in Wi-Fi in the Ford Explorer. Did you know that Bruce is sweet standing up? Road trip with the Sanchez family and available hands-free highway driving in the Ford F-150. Now get 2.9% financing for 60 months plus up to 4,500 cash back on select Ford SUVs. See your local Ford dealer and discover your best summer ever. And we are back here at the uh, stockyard on the campus of Kell High School where Kell is getting you ready to take on Greater Atlanta Christian in our Hall of Fame matchup here ahead of tomorrow's in Shrineman of the next class, the Georgia High School Football Hall of Fame. Let's also take some time to do our coin toss here presented by Georgia's Rome. You see Kell there in the uh, black uniforms with the burnt orange numbers, GAC, dressed in white. White tops, white britches, the uh, white helmets there as well. Of course, the customary gold and red there too. Sharp look from both these teams here this evening. Georgia's Rome bringing this coin toss to you. Uh, some nice sportsmanship there as the uh, captains for both sides take some time to shake hands and enjoy each other's company just for a moment before the action gets ready to begin here. And we'll also take some time to see our weather report here brought to you by the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 613, 65 degrees, wind blowing right now about nine miles an hour. It's clear skies, probably the coolest game we've had thus far uh, this year, Rusty, I would say. <laughs> Last time we were at Kale, I think everybody lost about five pounds sweat, and it is a great evening for high school football, great venue here at Kale High School. No doubt about that, a stark difference indeed. And of course, for Kell here, about to uh, kick things off. Fernando Tavares, high kick. We are underway from Kell High School. Returned by Tiberia, midfield. Still on his feet down the sidelines. GL Tiberia wow. on the game's opening kick. Takes it inside the 10, down near the five yard line for the Spartans to begin offensively. What I like about this, Brandon, watch how quick he gets north south. One cut, look how quick he gets through the hole. Watch him break this one tackle here, runs through it almost to the house. Explosive opening play for GAC. We are in the red zone to get things going here, presented by GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com and Tiberia is a name. We expect to talk about all night coming into the night, more than 800 yards rushing. This has been a balanced GAC attack when they put the ball on the ground. Tiberia has been excellent here this evening, this season. The quarterback is Jack Stanton. Stanton, another guy having a big year. He'll be shotgun on first down. Man goes in motion. It's a handoff. The ball may have come out. Kell thinks they've got it, and they do. So the handoff there goes to Maceo Woodward. Tiberia possibly out because perhaps he yes. was winded on the opening yes. kickoff. Woodward who comes in at running back, and it looks like he's going to cough it up here, and it's going to be a Kell football. Yep, comes out cleanly right there. Yep, on the mesh there, just a, just mishandled, and, and you called it right. Starting running back, runs the kickback. He's out of the game. And back-to-back, -back, bang, bang plays, and Kell gets the ball back. And their first offensive possession. Buckle your seatbelt here for Bryce Claymon. Back as the quarterback for Kell after a brief hiatus for the USA baseball team. He's going to hand it off on first down. This Kell team is deep at running back, and that's Tyreek Green getting the first carry there, the uh, sophomore well, told, on first down. Told he'll be at Alabama tomorrow for the big Tennessee game. To give to give you an well, idea of the GAC adept here, let's also take a look at the Kell starters on offense. Clavon, we told you about, Gary as exciting Bob as any player we've had for you on TV thus far this year. Kyle Baca, uh, recently minted, brand new college commit. Exciting uh, for him. Obviously, Peyton Zachary, uh, receiver that's played big every time we've ever had him on television. Here's Kyle Baca on the catch on second down. And he's going to go racing down the middle of the field. And he's going to go all the way for a touchdown. 85 yards for Kyle Vaca. Wow. Just gets open, busted coverage there by GAC. He goes right up the seam. Nobody's there. And a senior run, a wide receiver like Vaca gets that much space. It's over. Bobby May 
said this week that this may be the best outside receiver in the state here right now because of plays like that. And the last time we were here against Parkview, we had a long play to start the game off too. So this is a Kell team averaging about 50 points per game. And it's plays like that for Baca that certainly explain why that is. Amazing how quick that happened. Opening kickoff, turnover, and then a long touchdown. Four the plays. PAT is good. And just like that, GL Tiberia kick return gets GAC in business. Fumble opens the door for Kel. They strike quick. Bryce Clavon to Kyle Baca. We are off to a, quite a start here at Kell High School on a Friday night. Is your car costing you a lot of money? I don't mean the cost of your car payment or your auto insurance. I'm talking about everything else. Head gasket repair, $1,340. There goes our savings. We keep our cars in okay shape, but I swear every time something goes wrong, it costs $1,000. Stop worrying about what might go wrong with your car. Call now and get your carefree auto card at no cost today. Activate it to protect your wallet from big car expenses. We saved over $1,000 last year on oil changes, tires, and repairs. Thanks to Carefree Auto. How does Carefree Auto work? Here's a great example. Haley was recently stranded when her car broke down. She needed an emergency tow and then a costly repair. She used her Carefree Auto card and the tow truck was free. Plus, she got a check for $486 for her repair. So call the number on your screen right now and we'll send your Carefree Auto card at no cost today. Activate it and you'll get the same protection for up to four more of your cars free. You heard right. Just $19.95 a month includes up to five cars. Even tires and wheels are included. Call now, get your card, and make driving carefree. Call 1-800-407-4800 to get your carefree auto card and free information. Don't wait. Call 1-800-407-4800 now. Brandon Adams, Rusty Manziel back here live. Kell High School, Longhorns early 7-0 lead. Of course, this is our Hall of Fame game with the wonderful enshrinement ceremony tomorrow there at the College Football Hall of Fame for the second ever class of the Georgia High School Football Hall of Fame. Throughout the night, we'll be saying hello to some of the inductees for tomorrow, including Michael Harris right now out of America's High School and a uh, guy who went on to a great career at Georgia Tech and in the NFL there as well. Mr. Harris, it's a great pleasure to have you here on the Peachtree Sports Network tonight, and congratulations on an induction into the Georgia High School Football Hall of Fame. Thank you, sir. So when you look back on your career and when you think about your time there at America's, what do you kind of think about when you think about your time as a high school football player? Well, back when I played back in the 70s, it was a total different game than they have here. You know, uh, I think back, when I think back, I said, wow. You Playing see? football back then, those days, you had to be a different type of person. You know, we didn't have all these different. No, no water breaks. No water breaks and, no, <laughs> and all these different. Things. And they can crack back on you and do all that different kind of stuff. So it was like totally different, you know. One of the things I always tell students when I'm talking to uh, guys, I always say this. I say, they always say concussion. Think about it. Every play that you had a concussion. While we have a minute, let's also see our game officials here presented by the Georgia Sheet Metal and Air Conditioning Contractors Association. Of course, Greg Hogel is a referee, Brian Bogner, Keith Buds, Adam Porter, Dawson Arnold, all a part of this group tonight. Brett Sledge, Anthony Copeland, Samuel Lyons, the electronic clock operator, Jay Kramer here as well as GAC goes back on offense. Kel wisely keeping it away from GL Tiberia on that kick, but Tiberia does get a carry on first down. He's going to be brought down there. Nice tackle on the play by Mark Cavia Sabor, and that'll bring up second down. We all have that one game in high school we still remember. What was that one game that you still think about in that America's uniform you walked off the field? What was that one game that still gives you butterflies? Well, I was one of the one game that I really uh, think about a lot when we played uh, Stakesboro. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got hit on the other side of the field, and I got up and I went about 50 yards and caught uh, Frank Walker on the 20-yard line. Jack Stanton will uh, throw uh, deep uh, here. After then, we helped them back. They went backwards. 
we, we end up they end up being on about the 50 yards line. Mm. Nice catch by Gabe Daniels there. And by the way, Gabe Daniels got an offer from Georgia Tech, which is also your alma mater there as well. So a yellow jacket here seeing what perhaps might turn out to be a future yellow jacket making some plays right there. We're about to watch him on the sideline around number five now. <laughs> so do some recruiting later well, on. You know, I always tell any young man that are coming to Georgia Tech, you're going to get a great education and you're going to be able to play football. One thing about the education, that is something they'll never be able to take away from you. It's going to be with you all of your life. So you might get hurt on the first play in football, and you can't play anymore. But that education is going to be there for you. Hand off to Tiberia there on first down. Of course, you're not the only former Yellow Jacket going into this year's Georgia High School Football Hall of Fame, and I'm sure that's also a fact of which you're very proud as well. Yes. I'm, I'm, I got Lucia Sanford, yep. Eddie Lee Ivory. We all played together. That's right. And we're so lucky to have our coach, Pepper Rogers, going in with us at the same time. And also Pat Swilly. And Ken Swillen. So, that's exactly right. You know, yeah. that's a good group. That's you know, good you group. can't ask for a better group. You see our Georgia Army National Guard starting lineups kind of rolling through here. As Stan's going to get a pass complete there, Xavier Daisy gets the ball down to the 30-yard line. So, GAC on the move now with a uh, third down here play coming up. And obviously, Mr. Harris, you know, America's one of those towns in Georgia that loves its high school football. What does the sport mean in a town like America? So when you think about the great heritage of our of our sport, there in a place like that, you know, what is that connection that America has to the sport of high school football? America's put out great athletes. Like the I was watching the high school game here tonight. In America's back in the day, the whole stand would be full of our yeah. American fans. You can go up and rob the bank on Friday <laughs> night because everybody was out to the football they game. Find out till Monday. Yeah. <laughs> Tiberia, by the way, on the carry, that's going to move the chains for uh, for GAC as they look to respond. What was the thrilling Kyle Vaca touchdown catch a moment ago? We're 828 in our first quarter of play with Kel and GAC also talking to some of our great Georgia High School Football Hall of Fame induction class as the ceremony takes place tomorrow. Michael Harris with us right now, the former America star on his way into the Hall of Fame there tomorrow. We'll see a throw here on first down. That's a pass caught. Second catch of the night for Xavier Daisy. 584 yards receiving coming into the game and uh, on the move here once again. Well, Mr. Harris, it is a great pleasure to Thank have you. you here. Can't wait to see you downtown in Atlanta tomorrow oh, it's night. It's a great pleasure to be here. It, it's a Thank wonderful you. thing. Thank you. I told you on the phone. You are going to get in this thing, and you're yeah, here. Yeah, so you, you know, a, lot of people call, a lot of people called for you. You didn't have to call anybody. I can tell you that. It's a pleasure to be here. A lot here. of people called yeah. for you, man. Well, well, that means you know, people recognize right. some of the things you've done when you were playing. And Thank you. There were people mad now. So people got you back. Congratulations. Mr. Harris, we certainly appreciate that. Congratulations. We'll see you there tomorrow night. Michael Harris joining us out of America's one of the many special guests we'll have throughout the evening as we also watch what's going to go down here with uh Kel and GAC in fact we'll take a look at this play one more time here one thing I noticed here Brandon GAC getting the ball out quick yeah some crossing route some some bubble screens ball out in out in space we're in the red zone here presented by Georgia construction careers.com looking at first down again the other thing for Tim Hardy's team is they've been pretty well balanced this year from run and pass, and that's kind of reflecting what we're seeing here. Shifting up front for Kell defensively, now throwing by Stanton to the end Ooh. zone. Cannot quite connect. May have had a chance, but not quite able to bring it in was Gabe Daniels there, the junior wide receiver. Man, what a perfect ball in between just a little area there and almost connected with Daniels. See, he's got to drop that in between those two Kell defenders. Just unable, but they may come back to that play later in the game. I think one of the things our audience is going to be surprised by, because when you watch a guy like Jack Stanton throw the ball, you don't see Stanton with a lot of the really big offers right now. But in terms of quarterbacks and how they're playing this year, there aren't certainly very many guys having a better year overall Correct. than what Stanton's having this year. 1,485 yards coming into tonight. You see the uh, carry again going to Woodward. A fumble for Woodward earlier in the game, but no problem that time. And this is, this is, listen, you give up a big chunk play for a touchdown, but this is right in the wheelhouse of GAC. The longer you're on the field converting these plays, you're keeping Bryce Clavon on that on that sideline. And that's going to be key tonight for GAC. Yeah, that's one of the things to keep in mind, as Rusty says. You know, both these offenses have been explosive this year, but it's kind of a different kind of thing Correct. for uh, Kel. They'll strike you on the 85-yard play like we saw before, so... 
the more you keep that offense on the sidelines, the better you are if you're GAC. Of course, you do want to score, though, too. Stanton going to go down. He is sacked on the play. First man through, Elijah Washington, the senior linebacker, and Tyshawn Nath in on that one as well. Nice job there. He wanted to go to the top of the screen. You see it, it was covered. At that point, it was too late once you pull it down. That clock in your head, that 1,001, 1,000, 2,003, you got to get rid of it. Was unable to. Kale gets him to the ground for a negative play. That's going to bring on Brandon Beckham to try a field goal. This will be 36 yards for Beckham to get some points. All of a sudden now, GAC shifts out of a traditional offense here. Holder stepped up to become the quarterback on that play. Bobby May calls a timeout quickly. Yeah, he didn't want to mess around with that. So GAC gives you a little bit of a look on special teams, almost reminiscent of Dan Lanning last week for Oregon with the idea you go on the road against a high power team, you're not going to win that game with field goals, perhaps. At least that's the thought process there. So GAC rolls the dice on special teams. Bobby May calls a timeout. While he does, we'll remind you about our friends at Breda Pass Management. Because did you know that in the area, the size of a football field, there's room for over a million termites? So the question to ask is what's stopping those termites from finding your home? Well, you can let Breda Pass Management protect your home from termites and prevent these silent destroyers from costing you thousands of dollars of damage. You can see more at BredaPass.com. B R E D A. RadarPass.com. All right, so when we get back at it here, it's going to be fourth down. GAC showed a field goal look. It would have been a 36-yard try. Then went into a kind of a fake look where you slid, slid the uh, holder up into a position there as a quarterback. That was Denzel Watkins, who was kind of lined up as the uh, quarterback for a moment. Watkins stays in as the holder, and I guess now... It's going to be a traditional field goal try for a Brandon Beckham. Been a solid kicker all year for GAC. We'll see if he can find the Spartans' first points tonight. The hold is down. The kick is Locked. away. It is blocked. It's going to be picked up out of the air. Now returning down the sideline, out of bounds to the 40-yard line. There to scoop it up is Aid Rogan. They come off the top of the screen. They're going to come off the edge right here. Watch the top defender. Lays out perfectly. Man. Yeah, that's Markavius Sabor. Eh? That is pitcher. Per Watch him lay out in front so he doesn't hit anybody. That's Takes the perfect angle to block that kick. That's a Cincinnati commit blocking that. So early storyline here. Two red zone trips for GAC resulting in no points. Vaca, who's got a touchdown, goes in motion. Here's Clavon, the handoff. GAC is there to meet it in the backfield. And now shaking free, still going. Nice. How about that for a uh, man? Tyreek Green, you know, it seemed like he was going to be hit well in the backfield. Finally was brought late, down. Late flag. Late, late flag, flag here, late too. Flag. Yeah, he ran a long way to lose five yards. It wouldn't go down. Gonna get ready to welcome in a special guest again here in a moment. Representing a school that we saw on our drive for the GHSA state title just a couple of weeks ago. The Purple Hurricanes of Cartersville. And the former Georgia running back, Keith Henderson, going to join us here. A guy who's supplied many fine memories to the state of Georgia over the years, both the high school and college level, and then eventually went on to win a Super Bowl as well. So we'll talk to Keith Henderson about a lot of that coming up in a moment. Before that, though, let's get a word from our referee about the uh, penalty. Greg Hogle going to speak. Going to speak this yeah, out to dead us. Dead ball, personal foul on the offense. 15-yard penalty, 20-second down. So personal foul here on the offense. I didn't see what it, it, that it, was. It had to be late. It was very, very late flag. So. You'll see right here. Hard to see. Unless there's extracurricular stuff perhaps Something in the after, pile. Yep. Either way, it backs Kel up. As we get ready to see Clavon taking the snap. Now he will try to buy some time, throw it left side. Vach again, catch there at the 36 yard line. Gives us a chance to say to Keith Henderson. Another one of the inductees of the Georgia High School Football Hall of Fame tomorrow night. Mr. Henderson, we're fans of your career. We've certainly enjoyed watching you over the years, and we are proud to be able to celebrate 
this moment with you. How does it feel to be going into the Georgia High School Football Hall of Fame? Man, this is great. I mean, it's, it's, it's so unreal. I never <laughs> thought it'd never come, you know? <laughs> well, I can tell you from growing up in Rome, a, a young man that loves high school football, and I told him the story off the air. We'll watch this play right here. We'll get to this because I, I, I don't want to be shortchanged on this one. So Clavon here looking at a third down. He's moving some of his pieces around. Pressure's coming to him. He shakes free of that, tries to buy some time. I'm going to sidearm throw, oh. and it's incomplete. Clavon did everything he could do to get the ball out of there, but just not able to connect with his target that time and not able to bring that in was Jaden George, a junior wide receiver. The play's never over for him. That's what I like about him. Watch him flip his hips right here at the end and put this ball, I mean, on the money on the run. To flick the wrist like that on a sidearm motion, impressive level of athleticism for the quarterback right there, right, Keith? I haven't seen it. <laughs> uh, so Keith Henderson, I, I talked to Keith after, off the air a little bit, and growing up in Rome, I got a chance to see him play some of those good West Rome teams, but I remember seeing a game, particularly at Barron Stadium one time, and Brandon, there were so many people there, we were unable to get in, so me and my dad watched from behind the fence, and I saw Keith Henderson with the tape on his thigh pads. Well, you knew Rusty Mansell had to tape his thigh pads for every, ever, for, for forever and ever. I taped my thigh pads after watching Keith Henderson. Nobody cared that I played guard. I was <laughs> going to have my tape. I was taped up like Keith Henderson, man, but I was such a big fan. He was one of those guys that walked in. It was bigger than life. When we get back after this break, we're going to talk more about his career yeah. and what he meant in Northwest Georgia. So sure. Keith Henderson's here. we got a great game as well between Kell and GAC. You picked a great night to be with us here on the Peachtree Sports Network. Hendrick. Drive now, pay later. Shop HendrickCars.com this month and make no payments for 90 days. Over 20,000 new and pre-owned vehicles. No payments for 90 days. Visit HendrickCars.com. The Mechanical Trades Institute is an opportunity towards personal financial freedom through hands-on and rewarding work. Our school is completely free and gives apprentices the knowledge and skills required to gain access to a lifelong career path. Apprentices learn pipe fitting, plumbing, mechanical service, and welding. They earn money as they learn and graduate with no student debt. Start a career with the Mechanical Trades Institute and change your financial future. Struggling with food insecurity can feel lonely, yet every community across America is affected by hunger, which is why our Kroger Associates work together to rescue nutritious food, that would otherwise go to waste in an effort to donate 3 billion meals by 2025. Because we believe everyone should have access to fresh, delicious food. Join the Kroger Zero Hunger, Zero Waste Foundation to defeat hunger and eliminate food waste. The Forum River Center in Rome, Georgia is now open and available for meetings and receptions. We're fully equipped for large conventions, sporting events, weddings, and much more. The Forum is located downtown within walking distance of local restaurants, hotels, and boutique shopping. We offer a variety of meeting spaces, many with beautiful river views. Outdoor venues are available for that special touch. With our adjacent parking deck and a personal concierge on site. Your event is sure to be a hit. Find out more at forumrivercenter.com. The GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com drive for the GHSA state title is sponsored by Score Atlanta, your source for Georgia high school sports. HendrickCars.com. Get no payments for 90 days at HendrickCars.com. Experience the Hendrick difference. Sports Turf. You bring the vision, we'll bring it to life. The Georgia Army National Guard. The next generation is now. And by Ford. For great offers on F-150, see your local Ford dealer. And welcome back, everybody. Drive for the GHSA state title presented by GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com. Spartans of GAC back on offense here. Long field to drive on. A couple of red zone trips haven't resulted in points yet for GAC. And be careful there. Yeah, lucky there. Man. Almost intercepted. On that play, uh, a nice play defensively by Michael Dominic, sophomore linebacker, and uh, ball that stands lucky to have that one back. Ball got tipped. His elbow got tipped as he released it, so I kind of threw that off. We'll also bring Keith Henderson back in here, one of our Georgia High School Hall of Fame inductees out of Cartersville High School, of course, going on to play the Georgia Bulldogs and a Super Bowl champion there as well. And, you know, Keith, what's amazing to me is, obviously, you have a great career there at Cartersville, and 
you know, ever since then, you know, Cartersville's also been just such a major part of the Georgia high school football story. You know, how proud are you to kind of been a part of a legacy that continues so much, even to this day, of great high school football up there in Northwest Georgia in the Cartersville area? Man, it's, 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 it's amazing because uh, the way we came through it, 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 the high school in Cartersville, it was, it, was, it was tremendous and it was very, very uh, challenging, especially with Coach Barge. He, he was he was tough to even play for. Oh sure, and, and of course you know you're part of the legacy that kind of made Georgia in the eyes of so many running back university. You know you left, you go there, and the great history of running backs. Obviously, you get a chance to play for the legendary Vince Dooley, who we lost last year. When you think back on that, you know how do you remember that as well? Your chance to play for Coach Dooley. Well, he used to come in on, uh, on the road games. He used to come in, and uh, uh, me and Tim, he's roommate. Tim Worley. Yeah, yeah, he used to come in, uh, uh, how my baby Puff's doing today? Are we ready? <laughs> so we always ready. But being at Georgia, man, we had we just had some uh, good coaches, good players, good uh, upper classmen to teach you the ropes. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, that's what he did. Big plays have not been a problem for GAC tonight. You see Jack Stanton connect with Xavier Daisy there. That's third catch of the night for Daisy Got already. A flag down. But a flag may bring this one back, though. Keep me think back, Cartersville. Let's go Cartersville or Georgia. What was the one game you remember? What's the game you always think about, man? It was great to walk off the field in that uniform that day. What was the game for you? Well, my high school was against uh, Cass. And then um, I would say my college was against Georgia, uh, against Florida. Florida my, 80, fresh, freshman my freshman year. year. And of course, here on our drive for the GHSA state title, that Henderson name still lives on. Where You mentioned Cass. You've got two nephews, really star players for Cass. Devin and on the offense. Half the distance to the goal, lost it down, playing fourth down. So costly penalty there for GAC, creates another fourth down. But you've got two nephews who are playing a cast right now. We featured them on television a couple of times already this year. Terrific players. Nice to see the Henderson name living on in Georgia high school football the way that it is. It is. Uh, Devin and Kevin, they, they're doing their thing at cast. And a lot of people said, why don't you bring them to Carterville? Because they needed to be their own own people, Correct. own yep. players. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, create that own legacy. Yeah. Right. So they they did, they did it what they supposed to do. That's the last of the Mohicans. That's exactly right. <laughs> and of course, you know both these teams here tonight as GAC is going to punt from out of the very back of the end zone, getting it away. Fair catch called for, and then bouncing. Did it? Did it touch? Now, if that. If that touch, that should be down there at the four, right? Yeah. 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 So it may spot. be GAC football be on, the, on the touch. Yeah. They got it spotted but, here. But that's not that's not going to be able to be returned for a touchdown. But it may be GAC football. Let's see if we can get the ruling here. It didn't hit Kale. Let's see. Did it touch? Close there. Let's see the reaction here. Defense be hot. They're talking about it. Yeah, Peyton is your punt return man there. That's the sophomore. Did it touch Zachary? Oh, yeah. The kick yep. was touched by the receiver. Yeah, his shoe. And then recovered touched by the shoe. Kick See his shoe Fourth right there? On his, yep. white. Good, good view there. So let's explain the rule here. It's GAC football because Zachary touched it, but when a muff punt situation like that, at no level can you scoop it up and then return it for a, a, a score. So Watch the right foot. Watch the right foot at the end right there. Yeah, you see it move. You, yeah. you see you see the football being altered. So we angle. We've had big plays on both sides here, and after an issue on special teams for GAC a moment ago, where they had a field goal block, now they come up big after a special teams issue for uh, for Cal. So all of a sudden, the Spartans back on the move here. And you know, Keith, as we watch GAC continue this drive, this is a program that has six active players in the NFL. Of course, Kel, no stranger to producing NFL talent over the years as well, including Jonathan Dwyer, went to Georgia Tech. As you see the uh, catch, how about that wow. over the shoulder? Nice catch being hauled in. Damn. I mean, an amazing move offensively. And once again, Xavier Daisy's been all over the place offensively tonight for GAC. So here come the Spartans. But, you know, Keith, you go on to a great career in the NFL there as well. How proud were you to sort of represent the state of Georgia as you move on to the NFL? I was very proud. Uh, Coming out of Georgia and not knowing uh, what to expect once you get there. Uh, like I said earlier, we, I had a bunch of mentors, uh, especially playing at Georgia, Cartersville, and going on to play in the NFL. It, I had a bunch of people that, uh, that helped me out a lot. Receiver fell down, too much contact, it looks like. Flag is going to come in, and that's going to probably be a pass interference against Cal, which is going to move GAC a little closer. Well, I can say for both of us, man, I'm looking forward to it. Congratulations. Making Thank you very much. Induction to Georgia High School Football Hall of Fame. 
I got to get him a picture made. I got to do everything with him tomorrow night. It's Northwest What's Georgia proud right here. What's yeah, up? Keith Anderson, congratulations. Thanks for being here. We'll look forward to seeing the ceremony tomorrow night. Thank you for having Thank me. Thank you so much for being here Thank on the uh, broadcast here this evening. Thank you. So, yeah, uh, you're Rusty, as you said, it. Keith, one of our favorites. You know, I'm telling you. Your, your time there Keith in Northwest Vince, Georgia. Half the distance to the goal. Uh, from your time there in Northwest the Georgia. I'm, I'm telling you, I, I still remember sitting there with my dad in that truck. We couldn't even get into Barron Stadium. And what's unfortunate back then, Cartersville was really good, but only the region champ went. So yep. you're sitting there with four t- a team that went 59 and one in your region in West Rome. Amazing, you know. And in the red zone here, presented by GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com, and of course, one of my big memories of Keith Henderson. I'm sure tomorrow night I may talk to him about this as a third grader in 1985, going Ooh, down to Jacksonville, beating ne- up that Florida. Ne- that neck roll. <laughs> oh my goodness, you love that. Here's Stanton to throw to the end zone, and it's a touchdown. Yep. And GAC gets on the board. Braylon Burgess, the senior, there to haul it in. Great job there by Stanton getting outside the pocket and delivering. Nice ball. Hits him right on the money for the touchdown. They come right back to that area of the field. It feels like GAC scored 28 points. They've been all up and down the field, but able to capitalize on this drive. Brandon Beckham will try the PAT. And to echo your point, Rusty, I think one of the things that if you're a GAC fan, you've got to take as a big win. Your team right now is matching Kell in the explosive play department, if not producing more of those. Yeah. Between Daisy and the strike there to Burgess, the Tiberia kick return, you know, Kell has the big time skill position athletes, but GAC has come on the road and produced some explosive plays of its own. I'm telling you right now, I've been impressed with Stanton, the quarterback. He's thrown some really good balls, made the right reads, and uh, he gets the ball out of his hands is what I like. All right, let's check in on the uh, Rome River Jam, returning to the Coosa Valley Fairgrounds October 21st and 22nd. By the way, that's going up here <laughs> that's very soon. That's this weekend. Heading to it. Uh, you jam with your favorites, including headliners, Parker McCollum, Bailey Zimmerman, Laney Wilson as well. I wouldn't mind seeing that. Uh, also enjoy performances by Tracy Lawrence, Chase Matthew, John Langston, and a whole lot more. It's a wonderful event. You can find out more online, RomeEvents.com. I should say .org. That's RomeEvents.org. RomeEvents.org. You can also look at that QR code that was on your screen there a moment ago, too. Scoring summary now. Two plays, 59 yards, just 15 seconds after a turnover. Capitalize on a turnover. And, of course, we're giving you the update on that score. You can continue throughout the night to see the Breda Pass Management score ticker. We are heavy into region play right now. And a lot of fun games across the state tonight. Fair catch called for that time. And, and Brandon, we're in the part of where those games are important. Yeah, that's exactly right. start talking about those seeding the brackets and those types of things. So Ricardo Jackson had the uh, fair catch there, and that's going to put Kell back on offense. Of course, here in Region 6-5A, you're talking about a Kell team trying to win a region title for the first time since 2014. You're talking about a GAC team trying to get back to its winning ways after two straight losing seasons. But prior to that, a stretch of seven straight region titles for the Spartans. Of course, those coming in like 2A, 3A. So, you know, there's an extra level of pride about the chance to try to win one here in the 5A classification. Running play here, still on his feet, near midfield, out of bounds there. That's Mooney Gibson. That's just a freshman. Wow. He was good for the Corky Kell Dave Hunter Classic when he saw them the first time, and Gibson comes up big again. What I like about him, watch him run right through these arm tackles, stiff arm, gets back up the field. They have been sky high on him. They've been talking all summer to me, hey, we got a freshman, we got a freshman, and you look at the stats on him as a 14-year-old playing high school football. Ball rest at the 49. That's the Longhorn 49. Clavon going to keep it, pulled it back out, going to call his own number. Flag comes in. He slides down like the baseball oh, player that he is right there at the 41-yard line. I think line. they got Gibson on a hold right here, and I'm not real sure he did. I'm going to watch number six if we have the replay. Watch him as the lead back on the edge. We see this every week, Brandon, where you get a little bit of jersey, and is it stretching enough to call? Or you're, or you're outside the shoulder pads. I believe that's going to be the call. All right, we'll get a look here. Our referee, Holden. Greg Hogle, will tell Offense. us. Offense, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. Watch six right here. See him on 14 right there? Yep, he's got him just enough. I don't – right there, yep. Got to let go, freshman. So I was just gonna, a little bit much. I was going to ask you about that because is it like the college level where a guy like Gibson's athleticism translates even as a 14-year-old, but there's more to the – more you, to the you sport, you got to learn. And he's out on the edge, so he's easy to see. If you see that jersey 
getting pulled tight, you're going to get it because you're right in the view of that side judge, and that's who gave the hold. Going to put us now first and 20 after the penalty. Man goes in motion. A little bit of a jet sweep pitch to him. Oof. He's got some up to wheels. the 48-yard line. Yeah, big burst of speed coming that time by Markavius Sabor. We saw him block a field mm. goal earlier. He took the jet well, sweep pitch that five. time. He almost turned on the Jets Sabor. and gets back to near the original line of scrimmage after the penalty. Man, he got up the field in a hurry. I love that play, Brandon, that play design, because you just get him the ball. Hey, you do your thing. So looking at second 11 now, three receivers up on the top part of your screen here coming up just a moment. That's the right side of the formation overall. Vaca, who's got a touchdown, he wears number seven, and he'll be down on the bottom. That's the left side if you're here in the stadium. Three, actually just two down linemen right now for GAC. That's a handoff. Down to the 46-yard line goes Kamari Nix. Been playing some quarterback with Bryce Claybon out, but he's the wide receiver athlete there and just missed the hole there. He bounced that. I think if he tucks that in and trusts his blocks a little bit, I think you'll see that on tape. But man, Kamari Nix has been impressive both times we've seen him. I think it's the third time we've seen him in the last two years. Really like what I see out of him. And the ability to play quarterback shows he has ball skills. Third and five now. There's the handoff. GAC is going to meet it in the backfield, though. Big stop for the Spartans there to bring up fourth down. Another special guest slated to join us here in just a second. But Tyree Green going to get stood up here on fourth down. Nice tackle that time by Maceo Woodward, the outside linebacker. Going to welcome in Charles Grant here in a moment. Another one of the outstanding. Georgia high school football players on his way into the uh, in class tomorrow night. We're one minute left as well in the first quarter, and Kell keeps the offense out here on fourth down. At the 49, Clavon here. Going to now go a quick kick punt. He's already punted three times. That's his fourth of the season. He got touched on oh, the yep. scrimmage. They don't get a ton out of that. Bad bounce, too. So, Clavon's been their quick kick punter some this year. Three of those coming into the ninth does it there. This gets touched, and ultimately it's going to end up being pretty good field the position running for GAC. Back, the running back picking up the penetration, he just kicks it right off of his back. That's right. You're exactly right. The touch action came from his own teammate. That's a good point. With that, we'll welcome in Charles Grant. What a thrill this is. A tremendous former Georgia Bulldog, a New Orleans Saint. Yes, nice to be here Georgia High School tonight. Football Hall of Famer there as well. Mr. Grant, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. So we look back on your career. You know, listen, there have been a lot of great two sports stars, a lot of guys who could do it on both sides of the ball. But when we think about you in high school, a guy was really just capable of just doing everything, right? Oh, man, I, 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 I give the praise to my teammates that I played with in high school, uh, my coach, Coach Ingram. How about this play, uh, by the way? We'll get back to Charles Grant here, but the double throw double for pass. GAC, putting everything out there and connecting with GL Tiberia. Let's watch this again. Charles, what do you think about this? That's some trickery for you. Nice, that is play, some trickery. nice play design. Gabe Daniels throws a dime out his running back. Nice play design into the boundary. Yeah, so Jack Stan throws to Gabe Daniels. Gabe Daniels throws to GL Tiberia. And here we go. And uh, Charles Grant impressed by the numbers on Tiberia this year. And, you know, almost ran the opening kickoff back. Almost ran the opening kickoff back. And another one of these guys, a little bit like Stanton, the quarterback, who, you know, kind of these two offensive stars, you see Stanton throwing again. And on incomplete, you know, neither Tiberi or Stanton quite have those major college offers as of yet. They're putting on quite a show here on television thus far. Number 21 has some great numbers. He'll yep. get a look. Yep. I don't know what his classification is, but that young man should get a look in the future. So, Rusty, when you think back on Charles' career, you know, coming in the University of Georgia, the attention that he was getting, I remember Jim Donnan, what Donnan would say on radio interviews, things like that. What was, what was it like for you at such a young age to be getting the attention? Now, justifiably, obviously, but that level of attention, for just the rare blend of athleticism that you brought to the table. <laughs> I like it. There was a lot of attention. Uh, I got to George and got in the mix with a group of great individuals and longtime friends, so it was outstanding for me. Uh, I love everything about George. I'm a bulldog in and out. 
when we get back, we get, I'm going to give you time to think. When we get back, I'm going to ask you that one high school game that you always remember. But you got to after the break. We'll get to after that's, the break. All right. that's a tease from Rusty Manziel. We got Charles Grant here. We got a great football game going as well. We're 7-7 after one quarter. A region championship could be at stake here. We're all tied up. At Ingalls, we're proud to work with hundreds of local farms and businesses in the communities we call home. Quality, freshness, community, it's all in the bag. Ingalls, low prices, love the savings. If you are on the fence about ordering McDonald's, consider this a sign. Mix and match a double cheeseburger, six piece chicken McNuggets, or small fries for just $3.69. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Hi, I'm Chris with MaximumCashHomeBuyers.com. Skip the baloney and the headache of realtors, showings, inspections, and repairs. Sell fast and easy to someone you trust. Inherited a home? I got you. Vacant house? I'll buy it. Home that needs work? Even better. No inspections, no fees, no gotchas, and no empty promises. If you need a stress-free guaranteed cash offer, I'm your guy. Let me prove to you why I'm Atlanta's most trusted cash home buyer. Call 678-905-9000. That's 678-905-9000. Oh my, oh my gosh. gosh. <laughs> World Chase Tag is the Pro League tournament for the planet's most intense new game, which takes the art of being hunted down to a whole new level. It is relentless and fiercely intense with a chaser having just 20 seconds to get a hand on an invader. He's done it! He has done it! And there's only one rule. Don't get caught. Tuesdays at 7 on Peachtree Sports Network. All right, I'm here with Coach Hardy now. Coach, I really like the way you guys closed out that first quarter, got back in the game. What did you see from your offense on the touchdown drive? Yeah, we're competing, man. We made a couple mistakes, hurt ourselves. We've got some good skill players. They're getting the ball out in space, and we're starting to get a little momentum. So excited about where we're going. A lot of work yet to be done. Yeah. The playbook certainly opening up. Good luck in the second quarter, Coach. Thanks. Thank you so much, Craig Sager, Jr. Tim Hardy as well. He says they're competing. You better believe they are. The competition's been outstanding here. As we head towards the second quarter, tied up between Kell and GAC, Brandon Adams, Rusty Manziel, also Charles Grant, one of the inductees into our Georgia High School Football Hall of Fame. And you'd ask Charles a question. Man, I got to know, the quarter I break know a moment that ago. one game that you left the field, but when I'm proud to be here, this was a huge win for us. In high school. In high school. We played our rivalry Seminole County. We beat them 82 to 0. Oh, and it was wow. the beginning of the third quarter, <laughs> and everybody was falling out like five players had to get picked up by the ambulance. And they quit. They yeah, called oh the game. My goodness. My best high nothing. school memory with my teammates. Rusty, that was a I no hope, doubter. That's I, hope a no we doubter. Don't, I hope we don't see 82 nothing on TV at any ever, point in time. Because I don't think I can count that high. Ever. Hey, listen, before I leave the show with y'all, I wouldn't be going to the high school hall if I got to give it to my fullback, Talmud. Callaway and Dexter Gilbert when awesome. I was in high school. Awesome. Those guys paved the way for me to have all the success I had in high school, and I really want to thank them for that. Well, yep. listen, Charles, we are awesome, so man. proud to share this moment with you. Can't thank wait you. to see you in downtown see you tomorrow. tomorrow. We're big fans of yours. We appreciate you being here as a part of our broadcast here tonight. Go dogs! Go dogs, indeed, <laughs> for Charles Grant, the former Saint, the former dog, on his way to the Georgia High School Football Hall of Fame there as well. That is a pass caught. Getting to the 20-yard line there, Gabe Daniels. We saw him throw one a moment ago. Now he catches one. And I'd say GAC has come I'll on the road. You, They're I'll starting you, to feel it a little I'll bit. I'll tell you what, man. I am impressed with them on the outside. You know, I think we might have been what, – what we're going to have to get a turn. We've been Josh Love lady. Like, we just, we're just going to kind of show up. That's we don't right. know if we can even match up. And next thing you know, they got dudes on the edge. So GAC, of course, 7-0 and coming into the game. Kel 6-1. Kell a different team, though, now that Clavon, who you've obviously seen when they've had the ball back at quarterback, and, of course, their only loss was to 7A Parkview. Stanton now will throw again. He's got time. Middle of the field. Ooh, Daisy, who's done a lot tonight, oh, could not hold on to that one. goodness. Great protection from the offensive line. Gave Stanton plenty of time for this deep crossing route to come through the zone. Maybe just over the referee and that's not his fault but maybe he lost it just for a second right there but man you you got to have that one good job by the uh, GAC offensive line to give him plenty of time yeah this is a GAC offensive line it's not very big but you talked to Tim Hardy he said as that group has improved it kind of helps explain the overall offensive improvement the GAC seen overall as we have a timeout here on the field yeah I've been impressed with Stanton man junior class of 25 may have to uh 
good game tonight between Carrollton and Westlake. Oh, man, you know, you know some coaches on that sideline with those two teams. As the Breda Pest Management score ticker continues to roll through. And speaking of GAC, let's take a moment to take a look at the resume here for the Spartans. Told you before, trying to win a region championship again after a couple of straight losing seasons. Seven straight region titles before that. Made the state finals in 2002, 2014, 2016. Obviously, Micah Abernathy just actually How about activated that? for How the about Atlanta Falcons. That? Man, a young man. I covered Micah Abernathy and Darius Slayton. I still, to this day, talk to both of those guys a little bit. Uh, you know, they'll text me. What I like about Darius Slayton right there, you see, he, he texts me and like, listen, we got another guy. Here's another player. Yeah. I mean, he still loves his high school, and he still loves high school football. Yeah, Tim Hardy told us that Mike Abernathy still spends a good bit of time around yep. the GAC program, including yep. this summer. And, of course, you know, Davis Mills, the terrific former quarterback here, goes to Stanford, been in the NFL, and, you know, we talk about, you know, Stanton kind of in a position like that where an uh, NFL quarterback has been. And Davis Mills not the only very good quarterback the GAC's had over the years there as well. So Stanton understands the big shoes that he fills as the uh, quarterback for GAC. Of course, that team resume brought to you by Smart Local 85. Handoff again. This is Tiberia. Tiberia brought down there around the 17 yard line. He may have gotten four that time. That's going to bring up third down. We're in the red zone here as well, presented by Georgia Construction Careers.com. I'm telling you, I mean, is this not great? I mean, these, this class, oh my gosh. I mean, these guys got a great game, great weather. Yeah, I love it. And, you know, tomorrow night when we have the ceremony, one of my favorite nights of the year, and I, I mean that mm. with all sincerity, a chance for our families to come out and yeah. enjoy all of that. And Stanton here looks at the third down. He's got Tiberia at his right. Pressure coming. Stanton gets free, but he was going to go down. And Tyshawn Nat is there to bring him down. Tenth sack of the season for Nat. Actually, I shortchanged him because he had – one earlier in the in the game. That's his 11th sack on the season for Nat, and that's fourth down now here coming up. And we talk about all the players going into the Hall of Fame. We'll show you that right now. An unbelievable list. Man, I, I tell you what, I saw Deion Grant pregame, and I'm telling you, Deion Grant can play right, right now. Right now. He right looks, now. He still looks like a first-round. I tell you, another guy that's like that, because I saw him earlier this week as well, is that's Rennie Curran. Oh, oh Rennie yeah. Curran can oh, take yeah. snaps oh, at yeah. linebacker oh, yeah. oh, today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course, Ray Goff. We just saw Charles Grant a moment ago. JC going to go for it on fourth. Stanton throwing, sliding catch. Man, that spot is going to be. And it's going to be a big spot here. First of all, they're going to say it's a catch. It's Burgess who brings it. It's going to be short. Yeah, I mean, yeah it's going to be short. So short. it is a catch, but it's short. Yep. yep. Officials right on top of that yep. one. Good spot. Officials right on top of that. So Kell gets the stop that it needs. Longhorns now go back on offense. We'll see how they respond here now. Momentum has kind of been hanging in the balance a little bit, if anything, kind of resting a little bit on that GAC side. Yeah, it's been a lot of explosive plays. I think the story of the game right now is GAC's inability to kind of convert inside the red zone. Yeah, a couple of opportunities early. Some of that gets erased, though, after the touchdown catch by Burgess. Another sidearm throw. Zachary again. Good job running to the ball, man. I don't know how many – you and I have done this together for a few years. I don't know how many individual players have had better games, perhaps I don't want to say out of nowhere, but certainly in a surprising fashion. We saw Zachary back as a freshman last no year doubt. to kick off the uh, Corky Hill Dave Hunter Classic. He had one of the best individual performances of any of the guys we've seen. And I'm telling you, as the year went on, we had him in the Georgia League Classic up in Rome playing for the freshman team. And the sophomores who are older kids, they couldn't deal with it. Second down now. Clavon takes the shotgun snap. He will run. Gets free. On his feet, 20. Gets a block. Here's Bryce Clavon at midfield. He's at the 40, 30, 20. A man to beat inside the 10. And it's a touchdown for Bryce Clavon. Takes it 86 yards. Brandon, there's really nothing you can do about that. That is called getting out athleted. And he he just was too much for GAC was in potential. They were in spots to make the tackle. 
could not get him. And once he got his, he got rolling downhill, it was six. And you see what stresses you about him because you can guard everybody else, but you have got to account for him. And if you miss a tackle, he can do that to you and go 86 for a touchdown. We saw him week one for the Corky Kell Dave Hunter class. Had about a week of practice. Had about a week of practice, had been gone uh, with baseball, left the team for three weeks this season for the Team USA, has been back for three weeks, and he's back in midseason form, as Bobby May told us this week. He'll make his college decision on Sunday. We'll talk about that when we get back. We sure will. Fun game brewing here on Hall of Fame Friday night. It doesn't matter if this leaks. It don't matter to me. Can't see it from my house. Illegal use of hands and proper training. GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com has 14 different highly skilled trades with tuition free training in our certified apprenticeship programs to train you the right way. Find your career at GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com. The Georgia Sheet Metal JETC equips apprentices with the knowledge and skills required to start a rewarding career in the sheet metal industry with programs in HVAC, industrial welding, and testing, adjusting, and balancing. Training is 100% free and allows apprentices to earn as they learn. Journeymen graduate with no student debt and have the potential to earn more than most college graduates. Visit our website to learn more about this opportunity at careersinsheetmetal.com. of an eye so many tomorrows can disappear buckle up for your future every trip every time a message from the governor's office of highway safety and welcome back everyone thrilling football game taking place here kale has now retaken the lead on gac 14-7 bryce clavon just took it 86 yards <laughs> for a touchdown two plays 88 yards 54 seconds off the clock that is our scoring summary presented by Breda Pass Management. That's what a good player does. They stress you every single play. He has to be accounted for. Miss one tackle, he goes 86. Of course, we have a great special guest joining us here right now, Dion Grant, who represents the city of Augusta, going to the yeah. Georgia High School Football Hall of Fame tomorrow. Obviously a great part of that part of our state's high school football heritage. First of all, Dion, thanks for being with us tonight. Congratulations on a wonderful a career and enshrinement in the Georgia High School Football Hall of Fame tomorrow. How does that feel? Feel awesome. Feel awesome. You know, um, being here to represent the city of Augusta and that whole CSRA. So, um, you know, I'm honored. We see the kickoff here. GAC going to field it there at the 25 yard line. That's a fair catch called for there. And that's going to put uh, the Spartans back on offense again. I, I joked before you got up here. I said, man, dion has got a few reps left in him. You look good, man. Can you can you play a little cover four tonight for yeah, us? That's the outside of the book. It's a bad read on the inside. <laughs> well, I'll also tell you this there as well. One of the other inductees, of course, Jamal Lewis, your college teammate. And I'm a big Georgia fan. And saw you and Jamal Lewis standing side by side earlier. Man. I said, oh, no, I can't watch Deion Grant and Jamal <laughs> if, Lewis if, standing in the same if, place at the same time. If Cozy Coleman would have showed up, Brandon was gone. Know, he right? was gone. He was out. I would have been in tears. I've had to go somewhere else. But obviously, you guys go up there. You're part of a national championship team in 1998. And I know it probably makes obviously extra sweet for you to be able to go into the Georgia High School Football Hall of Fame with one of your college teammates there in Jamal. Roommate also. Oh, Roommate. That's okay. awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's Jam awesome. Jamal is the main reason why, one of the main reason why I went to Tennessee. Hmm. So did you guys know each other well before you both made the decision to go to Tennessee then? Yeah, we played on a Georgia-Florida um, okay. game together, and we had a relationship before that. Because it's interesting now, Rusty, it's text threads and, oh, you know, yeah, it's yeah. social media. Yeah. So recruits know each other, but interesting to know even back then, you know, recruits were able to make that connection and feel like you knew guys like that. Different parts of the state, of course, in from Atlanta, you from over in Augusta. But you guys could feel like you knew each other even prior to getting to Tennessee. For sure. Yeah, for sure. We built a strong relationship before that. 
All-American game, so we just kept it throughout college. I'm where before college. It's Tiberi on the handoff on second down, getting up to the 30. May have only gotten about one that time. That's a third down coming up now. Dion, I get a chance to ask everybody this one question. What was that one game for you in high school when you walked off the field that night? You were super proud to be in that uniform. Big win, great performance. What was that one you still remember? What was it? Oh, the state championship game. Who'd y'all yeah. beat? Doesn't matter anymore. But <laughs> yeah, I don't forget. <laughs> but you did say you, you, had, you had a state championship at home. Yes. What was that like after the game oh, on the a, field? It was amazing. You know, um, I come from a poor community, and our high school was surrounded by a lot of poor communities. Mm -hmm. So just to bring that type of energy um, to our community was huge for us. Here's Jack Stanton on third down. Will throw sideline, diving, wow. leaping, catch there. Uh, Gold shoe rack there to haul that in. Gabe Daniels, man. Gabe Daniels, excuse me, that's Daniels. Man, he is putting on a show. Mm -hmm. Daniels on the uh, catch there, and that's going to get GAC into a Longhorn mm. territory. Talking about a high point of ball. That's the beauty now, uh, Dion. Back, you know, back then we didn't be, had television every week on high school football. A young man like Gabe Daniels is a junior and plays like this on TV tonight. I mean, he's, his social he media is. tonight is going is to yeah. be popping. It's great, great uh, advantage here in the state of Georgia. Stanton now going to keep it on first down, sliding there down around the 37. And, you know, Dion, when you watch the sport at this level right now, how impressed are you with what Georgia high school football has become? Is great. Obviously, when you played, and that legacy just continues on now with so many of these guys going on to major college and the quality of play here at the high school level. I know week in, week out, I find myself incredibly impressed by it. I love it. I love it because I still have to go to war with the guys from Florida and Texas and <laughs> California. So long as we still put out this type of talent, I feel I feel great about it. And I know those guys over in the state of South Carolina I want to give you grief there too because that's always been a big thing in Augusta, right? Stanton, that's a pass caught. Once again, the direction of Gabe Daniels, and Daniels has proven to be a he's, very effective he, weapon tonight. He, he's, he's been a problem right now for Kel to deal with. By the way, we, we made it to see those shoes again for Daniels. Look at that, y'all. Look at those Ooh, shoes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> on TV on a Friday if, night. If you wear those, you better play good. You better play well in those. Yeah, let me ask you, high school or college? I want to go into the NFL because I know there's so many good players. High Look school or college, shoes. who was the one player you're like, man, this dude is something else that you played against? Wow. I'm going to let you think. We come back out to this player right okay. here. We'll give you a second. Who was that one guy you knew, like, man, I, I got my hands full with this dude this week? You see Elijah Washington, the linebacker, coming up big for Kel there. I have to say Kendra Bell. Okay. Kendra Bell. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that is certainly a, a great thing to consider. Well, listen, Dion, you played the game the right way. Your career was so much fun to follow. We're proud of what you've gone on to do and proud to share this moment with you. I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow night there in downtown Atlanta for the celebration of the College Football Hall of Fame for the Georgia High School Football Hall of Fame. Congratulations on going in tomorrow night. Tennessee or Bama tomorrow. <laughs> Thank y'all. I, th I thought I had him slipping there for a minute. <laughs> Thank y'all for having me. I appreciate Dion, that. Right there. I want to be inductees into the Georgia High School Thank Football you. Hall of Fame. Congratulations. Glad to have him here. And how about that? GAC going to get to the house for a touchdown. GL Tiberia gets it. And the Spartans are a PAT away from tying it up. Man, what a great read by Stanton to give underneath. Pressure upfield, just hands it off. And Tiberi does the rest. Boy, this I tell, is a I tell really you what, football man, game. I tell you what, GAC, can I say there's an undefeated team that's sneaky good? Yeah. Because I'm telling you, this this team, and I, I said it in the pregame, Tim Hardy does a tremendous job with his, his group and I and uh, I talked to some guys on this staff, and they said, listen, man, this is a really close group that is fun to coach. The receiving team, that put is declined, still an untimed down. So they're going to take the penalty. Uh, yeah, they're going to, I should say, decline it for the untimed. Okay, yeah. Excuse me. They're going to decline the penalty and just do the PAT over again. I was thinking for first moment they may take the shorter play and try to go for two, but that is not what they're doing, which is exactly what the referee told you. High snap. Gets down. Beckham gets the kick away. Whistle blows again. Kel seems to think that's on GAC, so this has turned into a little bit of an adventure here. 
want to tell everybody to stick around at halftime. We've got several more interviews. Yeah. Quincy Carter, Jamal Lewis, all those guys. It's going to be something special at halftime as well. Five-yard penalty. Still an untimed battle. Tell you one of the things I remember about Quincy Carter's career there at Southwest Cap. First of all, part of the legendary, you know, Buck Godfrey era. And, yep. uh, you know, really a, a very, very pivotal figure in – Georgia high school football history, mm. you know, and, and a pivotal team, that Southwest DeKalb team. But high snap again, Beckham gets it away again, he almost, and it's good. He almost got it again. So Carter was a great baseball player, too. Cool. Got, yeah. Terrific, yeah. terrific baseball player, drafted, of course, and then ends up going to Georgia after a little bit of a thought process about elsewhere. So it's that kind of night, lots of folks on hand, and a really good football game there as well. So we'll take a break and be right back after this. From the baseline to the sideline, the best live sports from Atlanta and beyond are on Peachtree Sports Network. The biggest plays, the instant classics, and the next rising stars are right here. On Peachtree Sports Network, your home for live local sports. Okay, girls. Some have said that, that rallying time. middle schoolers is a lot we like hurting cats. Out. To the moms and dads out there who control the chaos and make hurting cats look more like corralling kittens, Thanks, we at Mom. Ingles tip our hats. Ingles, all the ingredients for family. Okay, going back to one. This industry is my life. The Georgia film industry feeds my children and it feeds my dreams, which are two very important things. The film community is a real vital ecosystem. You can make a living in it, in an incredible town. Real jobs, real impact. Support Georgia Films. Visit whygeorgia.com. This is the Fantasy Goat. It's the difference between being the greatest of all time or having a bad season. A complete disaster. <laughs> <laughs> Saturdays at 6 on Peachtree Sports Network. The GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com drive for the GHSA state title is sponsored by Kroger. Boost by Kroger Plus. More savings, more benefits, a new level of membership. Dog Nation. Visit dognation.com for the latest Georgia team news and recruiting information. Georgia's Rome, where the rivers meet and the mountains begin. The Governor's Office of Highway Safety. Seatbelts save lives. The Governor's Office of Highway Safety reminds you to buckle up before every trip. And by the U.S. Army, be all you can be. And we are back. It's 14-14, our score. We'll give you a break to pass management scoring summer here to tell you how it all happened. But if you told me the score was 30-30, to 30, I think I might believe you. It yeah. seems like there have been enough big plays on both sides to sort of justify that. Man. By, by the way, that GAC helmet is sharp. Now. It is. That is a sharp helmet. Short, high kick. Fair caught 35-yard line. And as I told you, our Breda Pass Management scoring summary here gives you an idea of the Spartans marching down the field to tie up this football game and providing quite an answer to the fireworks. The Bryce Clavon, Bryce Clavon touchdown a moment ago. Got a text from a good buddy of mine that trains athletes in Atlanta. He told me that Gabe Daniels is a 10 600 meter. Yeah, big-time track star. Seven yeah. plays, 74 yards, 323 off the clock. GL Tiberia. The rushing touchdown to cap it off. Yeah, big track star is Daniels. You're right about that. That's legitimate speed, by the 10 way. 10-6 is different now. That is that is one percentile high school speed. Clavon again, fresh off a touchdown, going back, now rolling right, trying to throw it, just flicks the wrist, and it's Vaca again. Vaca almost had to become a defensive back to fight for that one. And he's a little bit worse to the wear after that. Kind of had to come back for that one a little bit. I mean, it's amazing how little wrist flick Clavon needs to get the ball that far, but perhaps under through Vaca just a little bit. Mm, the way he landed, hope he's okay there. He get up? Yeah. yeah. good. Yeah, he's walking off right now. You see him on the sideline. Big week for him committing to Eastern Kentucky. Yeah, great moment for the Vaca family there. We've had Kyle a good number of times over the years, yep, both no here at, Ky uh, at, at Kell and then prior to that at Johns Creek. Yep, Georgia League Classic. Yes. 
There's the uh, handoff, getting a block, and then lowering the shoulder is, once again, Mooney Gibson, the freshman running back. Yes, the freshman looks good when he totes it. I like him finish how he finished that run off. At this point in the season, Brandon, he's he's kind of no longer a freshman. You know what I mean? Your game game eight, one of the biggest region matchups. And even with Kell scoring the points they've scored, you know, we've had a lot of rain in Georgia the last couple of Friday nights, and Kell has run the ball a lot, as you see there. Tyreek Green getting a chance to carry it again. Bobby May said flag down too. Bobby May saying really our running game has kind of come into its own a little bit the last couple of weeks because they've run it more just simply because it's been raining. Yeah. Last week just set in on us. Talked to a lot of people around North Georgia and they were like, it wasn't supposed to do that, but that rain set in and just sure stayed. Did. Offense, 10 yard penalty, replay first down. And it's not really the turf quality that gets impacted because pretty much everyone's got the field turf now. It's the, the ball. ball it's the ball, yeah, yeah. Last week, especially at Harrison, you could see that thing out. He had some beautiful it. shots on TV of the rain last oh, week. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like something from a movie. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure it's not fun for the guys out there getting those shots. I'll tell you what, now, that, that Colquitt Lounge game is, yeah. is a – how big would Adam Carter, how much would he like to get a win over Cockwood in his first year you, down there at Lyons? Let me tell you something. There ain't a whole lot of teams that want Cockwood County as a number two seed. No, that is indeed the case. Clavon fakes the handoff, rolling right, time to throw. Pressure coming now, sidearm again. Wow. It's a pass complete. That's Zachary there. At the, excuse me, that is not. That is Tyree Green, the running back there. At the 40-yard line, still well behind the original line of scrimmage. Watch how, second easy, down watch how easy. That, that's that baseball. Yeah. Yeah. He just flicks that thing. He's got a decision on Sunday, Brandon. He told me before the game, Texas, Clemson, Indiana, and Georgia. And talking with the coaches down on the field before the game, they believe that he wants to play. He wants to go as a baseball player, yeah. but he wants to give football a shot somewhere as a, as a, as a walk-on. I want to ask you about that, but let's first see Clavon here on second down going to run. And really nice closing out play over there. Uh, Denzel Watkins comes over to help make the stop. So good job. That's going to bring third down coming up. How conceivable is it that someone who presumably would try to play quarterback at the college level could also play both sports right now? Well, I, I don't want to shoot him down because sure. I, you look at him right now and you say, what are you doing playing football? Because you're one of the top 20 baseball players in America. He loves this sport. He absolutely does. So if you're wired like that, you can go take a shot at a difficult route in college. But he's such a he's such an athlete, man, and with an arm. And you see today's football game, man, he would be something else. Look at this. Yeah, Clavon going to run again. He's already got an 86-yard touchdown run. Gets near a first down there. And this is one of those things where I feel like it's important to kind of give some context here. It's very common for you and I both to say, hey, so-and-so is really good at baseball or really good no, at basketball. No, 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 no. This is not really <laughs> no, good at no, this no. is yeah. This is a almost surefire first-round pick, perhaps, yeah. Yeah. a Team USA-level player. This yeah. is a guy whose baseball cards you perhaps will collect one day in the future. That's the kind of player this is on the baseball level. When you go to Taiwan for two weeks and you have USA across your chest, it's it's not a pay-for-play league. That is, that is an earned right. invitation. So now on fourth down, going to keep the offense out there. Clavon fakes the handoff and just slides right forward. So makes it look easy there, and that's going to move the chains for the Longhorns. Kell now in business with a fresh set in Spartan territory. Again, what makes him so dangerous, Brandon, you have to count for his arm, but you have to count for his legs on every play. You almost have to have a spy with him. So it takes a defender away. He is a true dual threat because he can throw the long ball or he can take 186 with his legs. I want to ask you this because well, let's first see Clavon throw it. Going to crank it up and throw it sideline. Zachary's there, but it's incomplete. So one of the things that fascinates me about him, you mentioned this from our first game in our Corky Gale Dave Hunter Classic. No worse for the wear, having really not practiced very much at all. Stepping back in, Bobby May saying kind of mid-season form after missing three weeks. So clearly he can just step back on the field and play high-level football. What do his teammates miss in terms of their opportunity not to practice with him? Is there a chemistry yeah, there's thing? Oh, yeah, there's timing. There's cadence. You hear that. The linemen have to hear your voice, the clap. It's all, there's all little small details. But, you know, they had some time with him, but not much at all this summer. And we, we made the comment, Brandon, we both agreed in Corky Kale that they, 
Okay, they, they lost that game against a very talented upper class uh, classification, yeah. 7A Parkview. But we said, listen, this team right here may not lose another one. Yeah. And they've been on that track. Tyreek Green, by the way, carrying the football. I told Bobby May that this week. I said, you know, Rusty and I both, we felt like you guys were going to be fine, that you'd shake that off and move right on after losing to a very good 7A team like Parkview. And pretty much that's exactly what's happened. By the way, Parkview's had some injuries to deal with since that game. Tyre Spain, of course, went down that night. Traylon Maddox, the other running back, I believe Crazy. he's injured now, too. So one of the really big things that Parkview kind of depends on, that running game, they're a little bit shorthanded at running back right now as Mooney Gibson carries it again. One more thing on Clavon. Let's say baseball didn't exist. What kind of football prospect would Clavon be if there was no such thing as baseball in this he would be a He would be a power five because – the, what, the today's football game and the way it's wired with dual threat and running. Listen, I, I've stood a whole week with Bryce Young side by side. He's every bit as big as Bryce Young. Yep. First down, Clavon throwing. That's, That's Zachary there. Well designed play. Zachary spins free, and he's going to go in for a touchdown. 28 yards because of a nifty move by Zachary the sophomore. I want you to watch this throw. Watch this throw from Clavon. Absolutely pressure on the money. Look where he hits him. Now watch this spin move by Zachary here to finish this thing off. <laughs> Man. Great block there by number three. You look at Tyreek Green gives his quarterback just long enough to deliver that ball. And then a missed tackle out in space, and Zachary makes him pay. Tim Hardy, the GAC coach, told us. I'm concerned about that speed they have at the skilled positions as the uh, flag's going to come in on the PAT. False start. Kicking team. Five yard penalty. Still an untimed down. After the good throw by Clavon, Zachary shows you what Hardy says he's concerned about, but thus far, give GAC credit because they've matched, they've got that, they've they've got matched too. that explosiveness when they've had the football. Yeah, yeah this, this, this has the makings right here. Of the, and no offense to anybody else, the two best teams in the region, mm -hmm. and this is going to be one of those four-quarter, last possession type games. Yeah, I mean, the way to say it, you know, without having some of you may regret later, obviously, is, you know, it's commanding lead in the region because everyone else has lost a couple of times correct, at least. Correct. But for all intents and purposes, we're allowed to say this. This is basically a region championship game that we're watching here right now. Yep. Without being too trite with that. By the way, Breda Pest Management score ticker. You see Jefferson on top of Logan with 49-7. On the receiving team, half the distance to the goal. That's Still perhaps not a surprise in terms of the winner, but 49-7 for a Logan yeah. team that's played really well they this year. Really Obviously, well. Shannon Jarvis there. No, that's not true. No, Shannon Jarvis with Elbert County. Elbert County, yeah, who got and a big win last week against uh, Raven County. Well, they're playing basically for the region championship tonight against Commerce, and last score I saw on the Breda Pest Management score ticker here was uh, Commerce 21, Elbert 7. Loganville, very high-powered offense. I tell you what, Travis Nolan has Jefferson rolling. He really does. You see Douglas on top of uh, Carver Atlanta right now. That'll make the uh, former Douglas Astro Jamal Lewis, who's here tonight, uh, very happy. And, of course, speaking of the NFL, uh, the Falcons uh, got some great things going for you right now, including group ticket packages available for Falcons home games. You can learn more about options for youth sports teams, client hosting events, and more when you check out atlantafalcons.com slash tickets. Got some moms here getting their moment. <laughs> what is Falcons football? It's Grady putting quarterbacks on notice. It's Kyle shredding defenses like a unicorn. It's Tyler breaking tackles like phone screens. It's AJ locking down anyone on his island. It's Drake touching the sun. It's ZP breaking another record. What is Falcons football? It's all you dirty birds. Rise up. I know we mentioned this a little earlier, but it seems appropriate to mention again, Micah Abernathy, the former GAC Spartan, activated awesome. this week by the Atlanta Falcons. Awesome. A really cool story. We covered him from his sophomore year on, and his father passed away four or five years ago, but knew that family well. And Micah, just a great young man. Hard to believe he is in the NFL. But glad to have him for the Falcons. 94 seconds in our half. Kick away there by for Fernando Tavares. Neither team wants to kick deep now. That's right. We saw we saw Tiberi, what he was able to do in the game's opening possession, and Kell's got any number of guys who could do the same thing. Let's see our scoring summary for Kell. 11 plays, 66 yards, 3.51 off the clock. 
the Peyton Zachary 28 yard touchdown reception, the culmination of all of that. I want to talk about some guys, and Kay Kaylee will interview some people at halftime. But, you know, one, one, one gentleman here, Ray Donaldson from Rome, Georgia, he played 17 years in the NFL. It's amazing to me. 17 years at center in well, the NFL. It's one of my favorite things, longevity in the NFL. You know, think about a guy like Thomas Davis who had that and Donaldson who has that. That's, you know, the old line about NFL not for long when you can make it a long time. That's amazing. It's a sack. Tyshawn Nat gets his third of the night. And that ball came out, but they're going to say he's down. Boy, Bobby May raved about Tyshawn Nat. And he, Bobby May does not rave. No. But he <laughs> raved about Tyshawn Nat. I mean. And you understand why. He well, has so been so all like, over the place when they've had negative plays and able to get Stanton to the ground. And this is a, you know, a team that. Tremendous legacy on the defensive line. Great defensive line a year ago. Nat's like the one returning starter that kind of came back in that group. He's kind of a two-year starter here. Uh, he's really kind of reignited that identity for Kell along the defensive line. Handoff goes to Tiberia. Tiberia going to be dragged down there. Did he stay on his feet after that? I guess he did. I thought he was down, but I guess he shook free from that and Second effort, still going to lose a little bit of yardage, but a lot of tenacity from Tiberia. Yeah, so he's wrapped up right there by Elijah Washington. Amazingly, just kind of rolls over on Washington, mm. stays up, not mm. down right there. Wow. I mean, kind of stayed after it. If that had turned into something, that's the kind of thing you could potentially see on Sports Center or whatever, but. Uh, it was not to be had. 30 seconds, 36 seconds left in our half now. Bobby May, he, he's liable to call a timeout after this. Yeah, he's standing beside. He, he calls yeah. it. Yep. Good point. Good point. So the game within the game here. This is that thing we hear the coaches talk about, the, the idea of the middle eight, the final yep. four minutes of the first half, first few minutes of the second half there as well. And, mm -hmm trying to steal that possession and maybe get some extra points out of that and it'll give us a chance to see the Kell resume here presented by Smart Local 85. Six and one here right now. Last season, of course, 10 and two. It was Bobby May's first year there on the job at Kell. Of course, you think about the uh, notable, notable alumni. Jonathan Dwyer still on the staff here. Yep. Quincy Mauger, of course, former Georgia Bulldog. Atlanta Falcon, Brian Randolph, who also played his college ball at Tennessee. And for a Kell team that's certainly had plenty of success over the years in terms of a region championship. Have not seen that from the Longhorns in a while, but that, that could be the end result once this regular season concludes if they're able to win tonight. Of course, that brought to you once again by Smart, Local 85. Big matchup right there in Manchester sure in Sly County. You look at Justice Terry, uh, the Georgia five-star 2025 commit, and you look at uh, Sly County with Zayden Walker. Yeah, what a great individual player matchup there. I'll tell you what, man, that, that could be potential, like, rematch for state championship. Yeah, in the uh, Division Two of the Class A. Had a chance to hang out with Justice Terry a little bit when we had our first-ever Georgia High School That's football great. media day back That's in crazy the summer. how big he is. He's huge, but what a great guy he oh, is, yeah, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. But he's enormous. He is so much larger than me. It's amazing. Third down. Stanton going to try to throw. Now he just has to slide down. Bobby May calling timeout quickly. Yeah. So there wasn't anything doing there. And if you're GAC, you got to be careful here. In fact, it may be interesting to see who Kell puts back to return this punt because that could get pretty exciting. And, of course, speaking of regions and trying to decide this, the uh, team schedule here presented by Personal Touch Lawn Care for Kell. 43-24 against Parkview to begin the season. Nothing to apologize for there. They have been on a run as of late. And it's not just winning games, it's scoring points. You're talking about a team averaging about 50, the highest scoring team in 5A right now. They've outscored their opponents 168-31 to 31 over the course of the last three. Talking about Cambridge, Northview, Centennial. That's the game that uh, Clavon returned for. And Clavon has averaged more than 200 yards passing in each of the three games since he's returned. Yeah, they're, I mean, listen, we, we, we said it. The staff told us, you know, kind of, hey, we're different when he's here. So the good news for Kell is, and good news for all of us, is the Kyle Vaca is back to return the punt, which means he wasn't too injured a moment ago. 
but he won't get a chance to return this. Ball going to roll dead there at the 50 and finally be touched dead at the uh, midfield. That's 19 seconds. This explosive Kell offense going to have a chance to extend its lead. We'll also take a moment here to remind you again about our induction ceremony tomorrow night for the second ever Georgia High School Football Hall of Fame class. And how about Ragoff representing Moultrie, Georgia? Getting ready to go in there. Uh, exciting to think about that. I got a, got a text tonight from Adam Meadows that he couldn't make this game, but he's excited about being there tomorrow That's night, right seeing a lot of his old teammates and longtime Georgia Bulldog uh, NFL first round draft pick. Of course. Lots of uh, tremendous names being mentioned there. The former Auburn running back, Ronnie Brown. Jeff, Jeff Saturday. Saturday. He's going to speak. He's going to speak for the class, Jeff Saturday. That's great. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the uh, former North Carolina Tar Hill and. Shamrock High School. Shamrock High School, baby. Which is defunct now, is that correct? It is defunct. So, um, uh, but Saturday, obviously, great Georgia high school football player. That's a pass caught. 40-yard line and down goes Brady Rouse. Sophomore moves the chains. Ten seconds here. Clavon, you're going to think, is going to clock it, and he will. That's going to give you seven seconds left. So, not happy there at all. They had a false start, and you see Clavon looking at his wide receiver, tapping his helmet. So that's a kill, kill, kill play. I'm just going to spike it. But it's not called, though, right? I don't. I, yes, I, they're not called. Can they get two plays here in seven seconds? Um, yeah, they're going to throw something quick to the sideline here. See if they something throw at the top no of the screen. No timeout. Clavon cranks it up and throwing. It's over there. Fight for the football and incomplete. And it's gonna end it. Bobby May wants a second. Bobby May put one finger in the air, the kill coach, the moment that ball touched. Still asking for it. And now they're going to say time comes to an end. So that brings the half to a close. Kell got the football, tried to set up the final scoring scenario, not quite working out, but they do have the lead here in what has been a very exciting first half. Speaking of fun and excitement, plenty more of that coming up at halftime as well with a lot of our Hall of Fame guests on hand there as well. So stay where you are right here tonight on the Peachtree Sports Network. Hendrick. Drive now, pay later. Shop HendrickCars.com this month and make no payments for 90 days. Over 20,000 new and pre-owned vehicles. No payments for 90 days. Visit HendrickCars.com. Beginning the morning you opened your eyes, we spent every waking moment preparing you for the day you'd leave our nest. Whether it's driving to practice or helping with homework, it's all prepared you for what am I going to be when I grow up? Will you be ready? After much thought, I made my decision to take my talents to the IBEW Local 613. The International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers is not simply a job. It's a career. Visit IBEW613.org to begin a new future today. My marriage kind of took a different path. He told me he was not moving back into the home. My biggest fear was the unknown what would happen with the children and myself, what would happen with the house. I found Meriwether and Tharp. They told me that they would walk me through this divorce and they did that tenfold. You need an attorney, you need the best attorney, and that's gonna be Meriwether and Tharp. I've used RS Andrews 15 years, purchased two heating and air systems, so I rely on their technicians for service. I call, they come, it's fixed. And I appreciate Andrew's commitment. He gives it his all. That's how R.S. Andrews makes me smile. Yankee Wawa! Running out of hot water is one way your water heater cries out for help. Call R.S. Andrews. Get a water heater rejuvenation. Your water heater gets added life. You get more hot water. Another way R.S. Andrews makes you smile today. And welcome to the Halftime Show, brought to you by Sports Turf. I'm Kelly Mansell with a pair of Hall of Famers in Ray Donaldson out of East Rome and Quincy Carter out of Southwest of Cab. He's repping it right now. Quincy, my dad told me that y'all's game versus Valdosta in the 90s still might be one of the best games to be ever played in the state of Georgia. But when you think back on your time at Southwest of Cab, what memories stand out to you? That state championship that we won in 1995 definitely was a um, 
uh, a memory that you just don't lose. Uh, but but you know I gotta you know um, give our community so much love because the love that they gave us, all the great players before us, playing for a legendary coach, Coach Buck Godfrey. You know, all the great quarterbacks that played before me, the Eric Jones, the, you know, Clemente Gordons, the Eric Johnsons. But our family, our, our community, just, uh, just brings some real fun members. Now, Mr. Donaldson, I know that East Rome is not here anymore, but its legacy certainly lives on. My dad talks about it all the time, the rivalry between East Rome and West Rome. Can you describe what that was like and what it was like to be a part of it? Oh, yeah, it was, it was, it was great. I enjoyed it, but uh, we always came up on the short end of the stick with them. They beat us every year that I played for East Rome. It just tore me up, but uh, the guys got revenge on them later on after I left, you know. Yes, Won a couple of state championships back to back, so it was all good. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Carter, you are coaching at Southwest DeKalb now. What's it like coaching at your alma mater, and how has the game changed? Uh, it's, it's one of the greatest feelings you ever have to walk down those hallways, to be on that practice field uh, that you you know put a lot of hard work into. Uh, but I think you know uh, one of the biggest differences from today's game to when I uh, back when I played, there's a lot of throwing of the football. Um, you know these kids got a lot of distractions. You know that uh, us coaches have to deal with. You know the outside influences, the social media, uh, some of the uh, trainers uh, that our kids go to. You know, sometimes during the middle of the week. Uh, so that's the biggest difference. And then uh, we're throwing the ball a whole lot. Mr. Donaldson, I want you to walk me through when you got the call that you were going to be inducted into the High School Football Hall of Fame. What was your reaction? Were you expecting it? No, I wasn't. I came last year to one of my old teammates wow. that got in, Larry Kennebrew. Got in, I came and watched him get inducted. And I figured at some point I may. But but it come this fast, I did not expect it. But I was pretty excited when I heard it. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Carter, not only you were were you a phenomenal football player, but baseball player as well. What was it like having to decide between the two? It was tough. Um, it, it, well, my first decision was go take this money with the Chicago Cubs right out of high school, and that's what I did. But uh, but my football itch never left me. Ended up coming back after a couple years of playing minor league baseball, and. Matter of fact, I'm just right down the street right here yes, sir. where I played a whole lot of baseball with the East Cobb Astros. Pretty cool. Wow. And Mr. Donaldson, when you look back on your time at East Rome, what's the memory that stands out to you? What do you remember most? Well, uh, getting my first start. Wow. So I was a linebacker. I backed up a guy, a senior, and he got hurt third game of the season. I took, took his spot, and from that point on, I kept his spot. And continued to play and be, you know became an All America All State player. Yes, sir, Mr. Carter. Twenty-two dogs being inducted into this year's class. How exciting is that? Is there anybody in particular that you were excited to see? Well, all, I, I've got to give a shout out to my quarterbacks. You know, no knock on my guy Ray uh, here, <laughs> uh, but my quarterbacks DJ Shockley and Mike Bobo. Uh, just seen Charles Grant, Randy Curran. Shoot, I'm missing, heck, what, about 13 more. <laughs> uh, but uh, but it feels good, man, to be going in with DJ and Mike Bobo. It really does. Yes, sir. I'm going to ask you the same thing, Mr. Donaldson. Is there anybody that you are particularly excited to see tonight or tomorrow that's also being inducted? Yeah, well, this young man to, to my right. You know, when I heard he was going in, I, was, I get to see him, get to meet him, get to talk to him, see what he's about. Because uh -huh. I know he played for Dallas. I ended my career with Dallas. So, yeah, he was one. And right now, I can't think of anybody right off bat. Oh, yeah, Michael Harris. Yes, he was playing during the time that I was playing. He was a linebacker as well, and he was probably considered the best linebacker in the state of Georgia. Mm -hmm. So I was glad to see him as well. Well, Mr. Donaldson, Mr. Carter, congratulations to you both. It's been my honor to interview the both of you. Excited to see you guys in some light blue jackets tomorrow night. Guys, we've got tons <laughs> more coming up right after the break, so stay tuned. <laughs> Everything Breaks is a new kind of auto protection plan that gives you more. You gotta have a protection plan, or you'll be paying the huge costs of auto repair on your own. Some plans charge you $150 a month, but for less than a dollar a day, Everything Breaks can protect you from crippling auto repair bills that you can't afford. Call the number on your screen now for a no-obligation quote. I like Everything Breaks because they have lots of different plans that's really affordable and they have really good customer service. 
Everything Breaks also includes 24-hour roadside assistance, free towing, and free rental cars. With our loyalty program, you can earn rewards like free oil changes and brake pads. Everything Breaks covers more than cars, so act now and coverage for your smartphone will be included free. That's auto and phone protection for one low price. It's only a matter of time until something breaks, so don't wait. Call now to join the millions of satisfied customers and start saving thousands on your repair bills. Call 800-935-0994 or visit everythingbreaks.com. It's good! He could go all the way! Yeah! At Ingalls, we're proud to partner with area athletics from Little League to the pros, college tournaments to high school heroes. It's all in the bag. You ready? Hold on, let me check the score. Ingalls, low prices, love the savings. All right, welcome back, guys. We're going to celebrate some more Hall of Fame action right here. And I've got two former Thomasville teammates, Guy McIntyre, who'll be going in tomorrow, and then a guy you guys obviously know, GHSA's executive director, Dr. Robin Hines. So, Guy, I'm going to start with you. Thomasville is actually the most represented high school in our Hall of Fame after these first two years. A lot of really special talent coming from there. Just what was it like suiting up for Thomasville? Uh, it was a dream come true. I mean, I live like three blocks away from Thomasville High School, so I could hear the band always playing, and me and David Loggins would go out after the games and go throw the ball up in the air in the dark, <laughs> thinking we were going to catch it, get a nosebleed. But uh, And I just always wanted to play for the Bulldogs. You know, it was, it was just a dream come true. I used to see Edress Dawson, Adolphus Warren, um, Gucci Mitchell, those guys, and I just wanted to get out there and, and, and be a part of it. That's right, and uh, you went to Georgia, you won the national championship there, had t a ton of success in the NFL as well, but I got to ask you, uh, Robin, what's your memory of seeing Guy back in the day? He was hard. He was hard. You know, Guy was a tight end, and I was an offensive lineman my senior year. And the thing about it is, you used to get a little upset with him and all, because he'd sit, get there and beat on us a little bit, and then he'd go off with the receivers. I don't know why, because we threw it about once or twice a game, whether we needed to or not, you know. But no, Guy was a great player, and, and, and just knowing and seeing him, he deserves to be in this high school Hall of Fame, because keep in mind, this is about high school. He's gone on and had a great college and pro career, 13 years in the NFL but he was a great high school player and, and has deserved everything that he's gotten. He certainly deserves to be in this hall. A hundred percent. And he listed a lot of different positions right there, tight end, defensive line, I think a little fullback, but what was it like just in high school playing these different positions and just molding into the player you eventually became in the NFL? Well, I actually almost quit football when they put me at tight end, <laughs> so exclusively. Jim Hughes, we, 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 we played both ways in the ninth grade, and we got tired and we lost the game. And Jim Hughes said he didn't want any swinging blank blank playing both ways. And he said, McIntyre, you're going to play tight end. I said, I quit. I will, I'm a defensive player at heart, and I've always wanted to play defense. And, but I said, okay, well, I can catch touchdowns, so okay, I'll do it. <laughs> but I, I really didn't want to play tight end. I wanted to play defense. Yeah, football practice differs depending on the position. We all know that. Uh, Dr. Hines, talk about just the institution of the Georgia High School Football Hall of Fame. Uh, you already said Guy deserves to be in there, but what excites you just year two, seeing all these guys go in, and then as we mentioned, Thomasville being well represented? I'll get to that in a second, but I will say, I want to say about not, Guy talking about losing a game in the ninth grade. That was the first time Thomasville High School had lost a ninth grade football game in about 10 years. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> no. Who'd you lose to? I don't, it wasn't I don't, me. I we don't were. know. It, it was, I don't know who it was, but we lost and Coach Hughes got mad and he didn't want anybody playing both ways. And yeah. so he made people play just one way and I really didn't want to play tight. <laughs> Well, I'm glad, he, I'm glad he played tight end because he was pretty good at that. Well, but. I appreciate it, you guys. We're going to be back there. we got another second half and more special guests celebrating our Hall of Fame game.
Williams. Welcome back to the Halftime Show brought to you by Sports Turf. I'm Kaylee Mansell with Score Atlanta reporter Craig Sager and Antoine Flanagan, son of Anthony Flanagan, who's going to be inducted into the High School Football Hall of Fame tomorrow night. i got to know, what was it like when you got the call that your dad was going to be inducted? Uh, it was pretty awesome to find out. I live in Italy, so wow. I, I had to get moving pretty quick once we got the word about it, get time off and just figure out the plane ticket to get here. So it was pretty awesome. I was pretty excited about it. Yeah, and he was just a historic quarterback, went to Georgia. But I just going through all these bios, I've heard some crazy stories. I heard he could throw it just as far left-handed as he could right-handed. Right. What have you just heard just about his athleticism, just the the type of just career he had? Uh, the, the career he has is amazing to find out how many people that actually knew him that I didn't know. A lot, a lot of stories he never told me because he never wanted to brag about what he did. But uh, a lot of times he would tell me stories that I didn't believe. Tell me about, you know, I was able to do this, I could do that. I said, no, you couldn't, Dad. You're, that's your lie. There's no way you did that. And come to find out, he was that guy. So it was awesome. And from what we've heard, you guys are bringing a crew tomorrow, upwards of 40, 50 people. Who can we expect to see tomorrow, and what's the honor like? Uh, well, of course, myself. Uh, his brother will be there, his only brother. Um, uh, my stepmom will be there. Uh, a number of friends from high school and things of that nature so I mean I, I don't know who else knew to him because he's so popular I didn't realize how, how popular that he was again like I said he never really talked about who he was you know talked about who he was you know what he really did just kept, kept to himself but it's awesome exactly went to University of Georgia as well and actually played basketball too right. uh, one of the few athletes that's been able to do that so what's it going to be like though just the people that haven't heard his story, just to be in this class tomorrow and them getting an opportunity to look at his achievements in high school, the, the pro level of college, just to have more people understand that. Uh, well, it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome to finally get his story out because a lot of times, you know, like I said, my dad's very very, very, very kept to himself. So uh, for everybody here about what he was able to do, a lot of people don't believe still to this day. Cause like, who, who knew about a quarterback that could throw with both hands? professionally or collegiate, he never heard of it. So just that and then the, the thing that he could kick the field goals and do all the things that he was able to do. So it's gonna be great to hear uh, his story get out there. That's right, 56 PATs, I think I remember that stat. That's right, correct. <laughs> and my last thing to you before we go to break is I know you said he didn't like to talk about himself a lot, but what's the greatest piece of advice your dad ever gave you? Uh, be, honest, be honest to yourself. Don't, you know, allow yourself to be human. You're gonna make mistakes, and uh, but it's not about how long you're gonna be down, but when you get back up. Well, Antoine, thank you so much for joining us. We're excited to see your dad go into the Hall of Fame tomorrow. Excited to see all of you guys there, guys. We have more Hall of Fame interviews coming up right after the break. Teams are committed, focused on the details, and work hard to be their best. From practice to games, right down to their gear. Your field is a critical part of the game that allows your athletes to showcase their athletic abilities. Sports Turf is committed to bringing your team innovative sports surfaces with unparalleled performance. You bring the vision. Our team brings it to life. A journeyman with Local 85, when you turn out, you can be hitting six figures. Hey, I have your back, you have my back. We're gonna do this together. We're, we're one for all, all for one. College just wasn't for me. Let's look into actual career jobs that wouldn't take college where I wouldn't, you know, lose money and all that. Instead of losing a lot more money at the end, why not make money and make more money at the end? What does it mean when people say America is a land of opportunity? It means the power to discover. To redefine yourself. To improve yourself. To challenge yourself. To realize there's more in you than you ever knew that you could do. It means giving people an open field to explore what they do best. With the best tools. The best training. The best technology in the world. We bring out the best in the people who serve. So you can be all you can be. 
welcome back to the Halftime Show brought to you by Sports Turf. I'm Kaylee Mansell with Score Atlanta reporter Craig Stager, Stan Brum, who was a part of our inaugural class last year, and Jamal Lewis, who will be inducted tomorrow. Stan, I want to start with you. You were part of that first group to go through. What was that like to be a part of the very first class inducted? First of all, it was such an honor and a privilege to be in that first class. Um, I know there are a lot of guys in the second class that that does probably deserves just as much to be in that first class, but it was truly an honor, you know, to be in there with the guys that we went in with, Herschel and Charlie Ward, and it was just some great names in there. It was, it was a lot of the older guys also. And then Jamal, question for you real quick. We got one of the best receivers of all time right here, considered number three, but you as a running back, you got it done. Your career at Douglas, just talk about what it was like playing for the Astros. Uh, it was awesome. It was awesome being a you know inner city school, uh, coming behind my older brother, you know, to play running back and play that position. But we had a great team. We had a, a bunch of great guys. Played played uh, played with a, a lot of guys I even came from middle school with. So we had a real mature team. But we competed and you know playing against you know Southwest Cab and seeing Quincy Carter out here and everything is like just uh, it just bring bring back great memories and. You know, Deion Grant, a teammate of mine, and just a lot of these guys that, that I've, I've seen and went to battle with and also went to battle against. You know, it's a good, good feeling. And Jamal, at one point, you were the number one ranked running back in the country. Not many people can say that they were at one point. What did it feel like to be number one? It felt great. It felt great. I, I, I must say I had a lot of options, and <laughs> I opened the doors for a lot of options. But, um, you know, it, it's just competing and, and knowing that, hey, look, you're just not competing against the guys that are in your neighborhood or within your your, your league. You're competing with, with guys all around the country. So uh, it was a great deal and, and, and glad to be a part of this class. And then, Stan, I got a question for you. Uh, the competition you played against, you're wearing that Valdosta letter jacket right now. What did it mean just to have that success at high school at a program like Valdosta? Valdosta had a lot of tremendous athletes. First of all, we had the greatest football coach in the world uh, right Baysmore, uh, but we had uh, a lot of talented guys. I mean, uh, there were a lot of guys that could have caught just the same amount of passes that I did if they had just been targeted as, as much. So, you know, Buck Ballou came from Valdosta. Uh, you know, the, my quarterback was Stanley Bounds, and he was a terrific quarterback, went to Ole Miss. But, uh, it, it, you know, we had a lot of tremendous athletes. It, you know, the athletes today seem to be in a different world than, than we were, but but you know still I think it's it's a little bit different now than it was back then. Well, Stan Jamal, we thank you both for joining us. So honored to be out here with you guys. Now, second half is coming up. Make sure to stay tuned. We will be back with more after the break. Everything Breaks is a new kind of auto protection plan that gives you more. You gotta have a protection plan, or you'll be paying the huge costs of auto repair on your own. Some plans charge you $150 a month, but for less than a dollar a day, Everything Breaks can protect you from crippling auto repair bills that you can't afford. Call the number on your screen now for a no obligation quote. I like Everything Breaks because they have lots of different plans, uh, it's really affordable, and they have really good customer service. Everything Breaks also includes 24-hour roadside assistance, free towing, and free rental cars. With our loyalty program, you can earn rewards like free oil changes and brake pads. Everything Breaks covers more than cars, so act now and coverage for your smartphone will be included free. That's auto and phone protection for one low price. It's only a matter of time until something breaks, so don't wait. Call now to join the millions of satisfied customers and start saving thousands on your repair bills. Call 800-935-0994 or visit everythingbreaks.com. It's the season of back to school, back to work, and back to all the wonderful flavors of fall. At Ingalls, we're here to help this fall be the best season of the year. Ingalls, we're with you every step of the way. If you are on the fence about ordering McDonald's, consider this a sign. Mix and match a double cheeseburger, six piece chicken McNuggets, or small fries for just $3.69. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Oh, yeah, dude, that doesn't look good. I know what to do. I'm going to castnetusa.com. I can apply minutes, and if approved, I can have the money as soon as the same business day. 
Go to CashNetUSA.com to apply for the money you need. Here's to the legends who paved the way for the stars of today. Because when you celebrate the past, you embrace the future. Origin Sports, run it back. Peachtree Sports Network, your home for the Savannah Ghost Pirates. And we are back. Halftime continues. 21-14 our score. Kell on top of GAC. High stakes matchup in Region 6 of the 5A classification and a fun second half coming up. Prior to that, though, let's give you an idea of kind of how we got to this point. Fireworks on both sides. We'll start off with our halftime stats presented by the Mechanical Trades Institute. And, you know, the number's going to reflect this explosiveness on both sides, although a pretty decided yardage advantage right now for Kel and a lot of that coming through the air. Yeah, when you got 305 total yards and you only got five first downs, yeah, you've, you've had some explosive plays, but I think the one thing that kind of stands out right here, Brandon, is this number right here, 34 rushing yards. They have been unable to establish anything against that Kale front four. Got one turnover as well, so I look forward to a big second half. Of course, a lot of those rushing yards, a good portion anyway, came on the GL Tiberia touchdown, so keep that in mind. And by the way, speaking of Tiberia, he'll factor prominently in our halftime highlights here presented by Ford. He began the game with a big, long kick return, and that set up eventually what would be another long return, this time by Kyle Vaca, 86 yards on the reception. Uh, that's a touchdown there. And then Kell also got the benefit of a blocked field goal. Yeah, you look at that. They've had a couple of very close calls on special teams, even with a punt, almost got a punt. Braylon Burgess got the touchdown. We told you about GL Tiberia, long kick return to begin the game. And he also had the rushing touchdown there as well. And that was GAC answering a lot of what we saw from Kel. But on this particular play, just way too much of a Bryce Glavon, yeah. one of two 80-plus yard touchdowns on the nine here for Kel. Yeah, that's what worries you all week, watching tape against him. The ability for him to throw it anywhere on the field, but those legs, man, those, those stress you out defensively in that front seven. you got to maintain discipline. Linebackers have got the tackle. They really they really had him kind of hemmed up and missed one tackle, and he cost him 86 yards on the touchdown. You see Brandon Beckham there. He'll have the duties to get us underway here to begin our third quarter. Peyton Zachary, one of the guys back deep to receive for Cal, as well as Kamari Nix, who Rusty told you about the first half while Bryce Clavon was away from the team. Nix had stepped into a starting quarterback duty and really performed pretty well. Beckham will probably kick it short. They've done that most of the night. Fair catch called for there at the 37, and that is where Kale will go back on offense. Another chance for us to see Bryce Clave on here. The tremendous quarterback who, as Rusty told you, getting ready to make a big baseball decision later on this weekend, but with an eye towards football on that too. Yeah, the opportunity for maybe him to play football, talk to his dad. His dad sitting outside the box here, got a chance to talk to him, and. They're ready to make decision, and you know, in the world of baseball and, and top prospects in the country, this that's a big decision on Sunday. I kind of looked at him, and he smiled, said, I'm ready to do it, Mr. Mansell, on Sunday. So didn't tell me where, but did tell me Texas, Clemson, Indiana, and Georgia. Took official to visit to Georgia on the Kentucky weekend. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. and we talked to Josh Brooks about that a little earlier this week, the way yeah. in which the sports other than football use those football weekends as great visit opportunities. You see Clavon running on first down up to about the 41 that time. Got about four, call it four. Make it second six coming up, I believe. Yeah, there you go. It's about second six coming up. Clavon looking towards the sideline. His team leads by a touchdown. To make it a two-score advantage here would be a pretty big boost for the Longhorns to begin the half. You see Vaca in motion. He had a big touchdown in the first half. That's a running play. 49-yard line and down. That's Tyree Green again. Another carry for the he's sophomore, and that's going to be a fresh set of downs for the Longhorns. Tell you what, he's a big, I like him in person, man. I know he's got picking up some offers, going to be at Alabama tomorrow, but I like his size, I like his burst. 
Yeah, Kell's got good young running backs. Mm. Green, a sophomore, Gibson, a freshman. Yep. Now it's a yeah, future. Got, it's pretty yeah. bright for the Longhorns yeah. when it comes to toting it. And you look at Zacher there at the bottom of the screen, number four, already with a Georgia offer. You yeah. see him shortening up his split. Is that the best sophomore wide receiver in the state, you think? Um, Clavon gets, I mean, talk about heady awareness. I mean, didn't want to take a hit. I mean, this is perfect. I mean, he, now he, I, that's that baseball slide, too, now. Yeah, so I actually thought he slid right on the marker, but officials have a better view of this than I do. They're actually going to mark him just a little bit short here on second one. Still didn't want to take a hit, and I'm, that's good, right. with I'm good with that. It's hard to tell with Zachary and his class in particular right now, uh, but he's certainly going to be a power five recruit all the way to the end. You see Nick's become a slot receiver. That gives you three on the left, empty backfield with two on the right. Clavon going to throw middle of the field, wide open, and not able to hold on to it. Nick's had it, could not quite bring it home. I don't know that you can design a play, make a throw any better than that. Great protection, deep ball accuracy. And he just. He got behind the defense. I mean, he was behind two defenders. Look at that ball right in the bucket. How much do you also love that play design on second one? That Take the taking shot. the shot towards yep. the end zone, yep. knowing you've got the short yardage play coming up here. Had some drops last week, too. You know, not, not really consistent with them, but had some drops lately out of Kale. So third and one. Handoff, easy first down, now more. Gibson down to the 25 yard line. Great job, block. What a block there by 77. Gavin Doherty. Doherty back from injury, 18 on the carry for Gibson. Recently back from injury, I should say. He blocked down on the lineman and then released to the linebacker on the second level. Good job there, 77. Cockwood County's extended its lead over Lowndes here a bit. Yep. Carrollton still shutting out Westlake right now in a pretty interesting matchup. Actually, that score is now 31-7. to seven. Wow. Yeah, Carrollton is really starting to peak, man. Impressive. Once again, here's Green. Green still on his feet inside the 10, and boy, Kell on the ground is tough right I'm now. I'm telling you right now, Kell came out with a different mindset. And they are running the ball and moving people up front against GAC. We're in the red zone presented by GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com. First down, Kell, the red zone at the 11. Green going to stay in as your tailback. Vaca, who's got a touchdown already tonight. Eventually, you'll see him as the receiver on the far left side of the formation. Nice look over the shoulder of Clavon. That's the defense that he's looking at here as he fakes the handoff, keeps it himself, gets a block, heading towards the outside. Flag comes in. So it's going to be a hold. The Kell fans nearest us don't like it. I don't. I'm going to have to see that in replay. I mean, it's you have to hold that block for a long time out in space, so it's hard for a re receiver, but see what they call here, certainly. Holding offense, 10-yard penalty, replay first So down. this is going to come to hand placement, right? Are they inside now, now or see, they 13, out? now look, he, he's good to me. See that? I think they might get it on seven, right there. Yep, see that? You grab the jersey just enough, and you see him throw it right there. And even though you say, hey, that's not a whole lot, he's standing on top, he sees that jersey move. Just a, just a kind of a one of those plays you really wish you'd, they'd let them play through a little bit. You know, it's one of those things. Ball start, offense, five yard penalty, first half. When you are asking wide receivers to block, you know, you know, long there for a while, it's almost the officials are sort of conditioned to look for it. We'll see our Gordo's cheesy play of the game here, presented by Gordo's Cheese Dip. First down, twenty. Ball at the 22. Yeah, yeah, whoops. Well, that's that one's on the center because everybody moves. Everybody kind of moving at the same time yeah. on that. You see 77 come in and talk to his center. Yeah, when everybody but the center moves, yeah. sort of tells yeah. what you need to know. There's the handoff to Gibson again. Gibson gives you the stiff arm, but it's going to be dragged down there. Pretty nice job Can we, tackle in the open field. I want you to watch Reed the block. Watch 77, watch 77 let go. Do they give it? They call it? 
don't have the angle, but man, it was a great block by 77 there. And he let go of the jersey just to make sure he didn't get the holding call. That was pitcher perfect. 77 right here, having a nice drive for Kale. Good open field tackle by Reed Voiles there as well, the linebacker. Darian Thomas going to go in motion. Clavon again, pressure coming his way. He's going to go down. There to bring him down was Bryce Azundu, the uh, senior defensive end, one of the captains on this defense. Does a good job of tracing down Clavon. Both teams tighten it down a little bit in the red zone. And, you know, you get a penalty, Brandon, and it puts you behind the chains, and you can't run that offense. It's got you down. You can't run the ball. You're, you're behind the chains, third and 16. You gotta, now you got to protect longer because the routes have to be longer, those types of things. But you got to tackle here. you got to tackle one if you run everybody off. Clavon throwing. Diving catch made there at the seven yard line. Going to still be short. Actually, going to make it more like the eight. Going to be short, bringing up fourth down coming up. Watch him flick this thing. Look at this. Zip. Look at that ball. Yep. Man. Kale's going to bring its field goal team, Try And by the way, this will be the first field goal of the attempt of the season for Kale. Uh oh. They have been scoring so many points they haven't needed that. But they'll try it here right now. It'll be 25 yards. Kick is away. And it's no good. So GAC gets the stop. Colin Mitchell's kick is no good and the Spartans weather the drive come away with no points allowed and get a chance to try to tie this football game up when we continue man you know how to do this man i don't even know i was flipping burgers last week violation on sportsmanlike conduct impersonating a craftsman Skilled trade unions are well-trained career pros, not part-timers. Construction is a rewarding and lucrative career with the advancement potential, but you have to do it the right way with the right training. Learn how you can be a pro. Find your career at georgiaconstructioncareers.com. Planting season is here, and it's time to get your yard looking its best. So treat your yard to the perfect touch from the professionals at Personal Touch Lawn Care. Mowing, maintenance, design, and construction. Personal Touch Lawn Care does it all. If my yard is taken care of, it's one thing off my list that I don't have to worry about. Sign up now for monthly maintenance and get the 12th month free. Big enough to serve you, small enough to know you. Personal Touch Lawn Care, 770-908-1238 or online at ptlcatlanta.com. America, it's time to gear up and get out there in a new Ford vehicle. And it all starts at your local Ford dealer during the Discover Summer Sales Event. Choose from a great selection of trucks and SUVs equipped with the tech and comfort you need to discover your best summer ever. With a large inventory in stock, now is the best time to trade in, trade up, and discover summer with Ford. Now get 2.9% financing for 60 months plus up to 4,500 cash back on select Ford SUVs. See your local Ford dealer and discover your best summer ever. The try for the GHSA state title is presented by GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com. Transform your future today. Back at it here, GAC on offense after coming away with no points allowed on the first drive by Kale to begin the third quarter, marching down the field, a lot of that on the ground, but ultimately a missed field goal. And now Spartans go back at it. Stanton to throw. A little bit of an RPO style play, but it's batted down at the line of scrimmage. Pass incomplete. Pass broken up the middle number two, Justin Logan. Second down. Wow, he got yeah, up. going high to get Man. that. One. How about that? Goodness gracious! Almost intercepted it. Justin Logan, the Arkansas commit, and linebacker. Kell showing pressure here on second down. Here they come. Stanton is going to finally go down. Whole host of Longhorns there to bring him down. Yeah. 
Kelvin, They're having problems with 99. Yeah, Tayshawn Nat, Tayshawn Nat, he is he is giving them issues, getting up the field, had to flush him out of the pocket, and the rest of his Kale teammates got to him at that point. But that started, no question, with Tayshawn Nat, number 99. Yeah, I think when we saw Kale earlier this year, we thought the identity of this defense might be a little bit more around like the linebacker. It's also a terrific secondary group there as well, but Nat has kind of brought this back to where perhaps it was in 2022 when you kind of knew that Longhorn defensive line. Here's Stanton throwing. Is that going to be caught? There it is by Xavier Daisy. 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 Daisy's had a nice night tonight. Good job by Stanton just to get the defense in the defense Good job by Stanton just to get this thing delivered. Come up about three yards short, and they're going to punt it. You know, we talk a lot about the Kell offense because of the explosiveness, but we saw Logan a moment ago. That's an Arkansas commit. You've got Cedric Franklin. He's on his way to Georgia Tech. Arcavius Sabor, we've seen him make a couple plays tonight on his way to Cincinnati. Uh, Kamari Nix, who was at one point in time quarterback, Arkansas State, and you almost saw a chance to block that punt there. Gets it away, takes a little bit of a – Spartan roll finally goes down there the 39 yard line. So this Kell defense is more than capable of being pretty dominant in its own right there as well. They got the football back for now though, and the lead. We're happy to have you on the Peachtree Sports Network here on a Friday night. It's the season of back to school, back to work, and back to all the wonderful fun, flavors, and friendships that make fall one of the best times of the year. For us at Ingalls, it's the season of festivals, fairs, and favorite dishes. And from football kickoffs to baseball playoffs, from farm fields to soccer fields, we'll be there to help this fall be the best season of the year. Ingalls, we're with you every step of the way. Do you have difficulty hearing your TV? Or have trouble hearing conversations? Then you would benefit from nano hearing aids. Other hearing aids are expensive and cost thousands of dollars. But if you call now, you can get two Nano CIC rechargeable hearing aids for only $297. Don't be fooled by overpriced hearing aids ever again. The Nano CIC rechargeable hearing aid is a true hearing aid, not an amplifier. And they offer superior noise reduction and a tiny in-the-ear design that is nearly invisible. And best of all, they are incredibly affordable. Call now and get two Nano CIC rechargeable hearing aids for only $297 or opt into our payment plan of four easy interest-free payments. Plus, if you call now, we'll add a portable charging dock, and your shipping is absolutely free. The Nano Hearing Aids come with outstanding lifetime customer support and a 45-day money-back guarantee. Supplies are limited, so you must act now. Call 1-800-411-8913. That's 1-800-411-8913. The GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com Drive for the GHSA State Title is sponsored by the Mechanical Trades Institute, the best kept secret everyone should know about. Smart Local 85, Sheet Metal is a Smart Move, Gatorade, Fuel Tomorrow, the Georgia Sheet Metal and Air Conditioning Contractors Association, Careers in SheetMetal.com, Building a Solid Future, the Atlanta Falcons, Rise Up Dirty Birds and by the Gwinnett County Sheriff's Office. Together, we can make a difference. And we are back, 5.32 to go, third quarter action. You see a nice look there at the Kell stands. Good crowd here on what is homecoming tonight at the Stockyard. Senior night as well. Senior night. And you see the handoff. So let me correct myself. It's senior night, it's not, senior, home, not, home, not homecoming. Not it's senior home. night. Again, another block by 77. I'm telling you, man, he is absolutely just flushing the – watch the right tackle. Don't you watch the right tackle where he is down the field. You can't even see – see, see he's, he's got his guy blocked out of the screen. Yeah. They are running right behind Gavin Darty. You know, Bobby May told us that. He said, hey, listen, we're glad to have him back. That's the guy that kind of powers this offensive line. Yep. Got to give those old linemen some love. He's doing his job. Had a nice second half. Tight end goes in motion. It's Ricardo Jackson. Clavon 
wrapped up, and down nice he job. goes. And GAC's done a pretty good job here yep. in this third quarter of kind of being wherever Clavon is. Yes. They've, they've had Clavon. It's been stopping the run. That's yeah. the problem they've had. They've had Clavon kind of bottled up. It's just been when they run power and come downhill on them, they've had problems with that. I'll tell you what, Grayson quietly – Quietly coming back through their schedule after that Walton first game. Parkview on top of Newton right now. That's an undefeated Newton team. And Parkview last week surprising loser to Archer. Pass was tipped the line of scrimmage. Zachary was the intended target. That pass is incomplete. How about this surprising score from uh, Right now, I mean, Mill Creek's obviously winning, but 24-18 in the fourth yeah. quarter. Yeah. Collins Hill showing some life against the Mill Creek team, maybe still basking in the glory of their win against Buford, which, by the way, you may not have been aware of if all you did oh, was have access to ESPN2 last even, week. Even, even J.J. Watt was mad. I can promise you this. We will not be cut away from this game before its conclusion no, no. to show NBA preseason action. Clavon trying to set up the screen. It gets deflected, and it's intercepted. How about the deflection there? The play is made by the defensive lineman. I don't know who he is, but he reads screen. Watch the defensive lineman right here. It's 56. It's see, him, see him. See him. See him. Look. Great job. He recognized he got a free release. He's like, wait a minute. Something's up. He stops. Claybon's trying to let the play develop, and he tips the ball. So Amari Hughes gets the deflection. Reed Voiles gets the interception. Well, well coach played because when he got the free release, he stopped, got his hands up, tip ball, interception. Yeah, you could read it that it was going to be that screen, and you're right. Hughes knew he couldn't get there, and so he did what your coach to do, just go up as high as you can. Hey, when, something, something don't, when something don't look good, it's not that easy, I can right. assure you. Nice job. Big turnover there. Yeah, I heard a coach on the sideline one time yelling at his, uh, his defensive line, if you haven't been beating your man all night long and all of a sudden you come busting <laughs> through there you like you're gate. a hero, <laughs> turn around because the joke is on you. <laughs> yep. Looks like we're going to have a play clock issue here, by the way, which yep. is the second week in a row that we've had play clock issues. Mm. I guess that's bad luck for us when it comes to that. Or I should say we are bad luck for the play clock. For our might be. Might be. See what they do here with Tayshawn, Tayshawn Nat, 99 there. You saw him right there lined up over the right guard. He's been a problem for this GAC offense. Volsky goes in motion. Pressure comes on Stanton, and that's a different pass rush that time. That's the quarterback, Cedric Franklin, who came in, got to Stanton quickly. Man's a backside free blitz by the corner, and – I say this a lot. The team we cover reminds you so much of that Eric Stokes in Tennessee That's play right. when he had that free release on the quarterback, and you just don't – you can't feel that because it's on you so quick. So that pressure makes it almost impossible for Stanton to make the completion, which now brings up second and ten after that. Showing blitz. They coming. Stanton going to hand off to Tiberia. Tiberia finds the seam up the middle, and he's going to take off. Straight down the middle of the field for a touchdown. Wow. 51 yards for Tiberia. Man, they brought the blitz, and they picked it up just enough. There was nobody on the second level left, and Tiberia shows a different gear. What a great play. Just wrap around handoff there, and he's gone. Second touchdown of the night for Tiberia. What a football game. Wow. Love the play design. Beckham is on for the PAT. I got, I got the right guard to move. And that's blocked. And that can be returned. They just didn't get called because the right guard moved, but didn't see it. We also have a Kale man down well, here. No good. Cannot return that. Excuse me. <laughs> a little overzealous there. You cannot. Watch the right guard. He moves. See him pointing. Mm, big man in that. Big man in that stance. That's a lot. Of, that's a long time. You got a hold. That is a long time to hang out. I, hang I out feel there. you. I feel you, big man. So we'll see it here. It's 
blocked and by rule here in Georgia high school football that cannot be returned. So game remains a one point lead right now for Cal and a fun brewing. We'll take a quick time. I'll be right back after this. What's so great about being a Kroger Boost member? Free delivery on the Kroger products you love and more rewards too, like double fuel points on everything you buy. Experience a new level of membership starting as low as $59 a year with Boost by Kroger Plus. Learn more at Kroger.com today. Are you ready to serve and protect the citizens of Gwinnett County? The Gwinnett County Sheriff's Office offers a range of career paths starting from entry level jailer to jailer officer lieutenant. Take advantage of our sign on bonus up to $4,700 and become a guardian of your community today. Explore the possibilities for a brighter future by visiting GoGCSO.com and pave the way for your career advancement. Go GCSO. America, come along with our adventure seekers, the Sanchez family, and discover summer with the Ford F-150. See how available features like Pro Trailer Backup Assist make backing up as easy as turning a knob. Watch as Pro Power on board lights up the night. And Ford Blue Cruise makes driving even more fun. Now get select Ford F-150 trucks with 3.9% financing for 60 months, plus get up to 1,500 cash back with your trading, only at your local Ford dealer. Welcome back, everyone. Our new score, Kell on top, 21-20. GAC just had a GL Tiberia touchdown run, 49 yards on the scamper. PAT block. Yeah, special teams have, been, have loomed large tonight. Beckham's kick. Going to be fielded there inside the 30, and that's going to put Kell back on offense again. It's amazing that that's a well-executed play because our day, if you had 30 on the 30-yard line, that's a bad start field position. That's exactly what they wanted to do. Yeah, we say this all the time that the kickoff has almost been, I would say, eliminated from certainly the college game and to a large degree the NFL game too. You just don't see kick returns like you used to. But in high school football, it's about as big as anything no because doubt. if you don't kick a touchback, and it's that's a long kick for a high school kicker. By rule, you can't bring it out of the end zone, but if you can't get it there, gosh, you can go for a touchdown just like that. But we also see onside kick recoveries all the time. We see fumbles. I mean, it really is a game of roulette every time one of these kickoffs happens. So a high kick like that that's a obvious fair catch situation, that is well executed. Here's the running play on first down. Up to the 45-yard line, and another successful play on the ground for Tyreek Green. That's the problem they've been giving GAC right there on the right side. You'll see Baca come in motion this time, and he's going to help seal off the defensive end, and there's nobody there from contain. Watch, watch a wide receiver seven here pick up and help seal that guy. See, there's nobody set the edge. Wide receiver blocking good out in space, well executed. But the play was made there by Baca, wide receiver, blocking that defensive end along with his tackle. 314 to go, third quarter action. Two receivers off to the left. Clavon looks right. Pass caught by Brady Rouse. Rouse inside the 40, and a fresh set of downs coming now for Kell. He's all the way down to the 36. And here come the Longhorns. Right back down the field. It's the Kell team that's won six straight games since its season opening loss to Parkview, which we also had for you here. Part of our broadcast. Then on Peachtree TV. Now, of course, happy to be with you on the Peachtree Sports Network. Here's Zachary in motion. Going to fake to him. Going to hand off to Green instead. That's almost like a Gus Malzahn style yeah, play. Yeah, I like that play, man. Ball head off to number six, Moody Gibson. 
I like this freshman. This is going to be it's going to be a name to know. I already believe he's got an invite as well to Georgia League Classic. Yeah. All right, looking at second seven now after three for Gibson on that. That's the handoff. And heading down the sideline. How about the opportunity for a carry that time for Gibson again? They go trips, Brandon, to lighten the box a little bit. And they just create some lanes in this Kale running game. It's beginning to be an issue That's for actually GAC. Kamari Nix there as they're just substituting at will at running back. That was Nix on that carry. I like it, too. Just get your playmakers the ball. So good on the ground right now. Two seventeen after the clock stops after the first down. Fake the handoff to Gibson. Here's Clavon up the middle. Took a pretty big hit Clayvon. there around the six seven yard line. That'll bring up second goal now coming up. This is very, from very kind of similar to what Auburn did to Georgia with a quarterback keep yeah. and misdirection. See a lot of those fakes, motions, and when your quarterback can run the ball. It stresses you out. 145 clock moving. Got trips at the top. Spre spreading themselves out left. They are outflanked at the top. And they Clavon come right back. handing to Tyree Green. Green goes into the end zone for a touchdown. So the focus, the attention moved left after the nice receiver play. split out. You Great come play. back to Tyree Green. He goes right six yards for a score. Two different times there. They lighten the box with trips. See those defenders going away? They just go away from that, seal it off, touchdown. Kell up seven. Can extend its lead here. Colin Mitchell on trying the PAT. And it's good. 104 seconds left. I should say 94 seconds left in our first, I should say third quarter. It's Kell on top, 27-20. And now it's time for the 2023 Georgia League Classic Recruiting Report presented by Dog Nation as another crop of invitees go out. Yeah, things are starting to ramp up a little bit here. And if we get the graphic up, I think we're around 40 invites this week. And you see Kyle Baca there, the senior. That's where I saw him tonight. Running back Fred Brown out of coffee. Talked to their staff this week. Uh, Jake Bailey, a wide receiver out of Rockmar Baxter Wright, Gainesville. You notice that name. And you know, go all the way down. Cole Crawford told you he earned his invite he last sure did. a couple of weeks ago. So you see Braden Rouse right here from Kale, the sophomore. And a lot of really good names, and this thing will ramp up next week. We'll probably do another 50 invites and looking forward to, uh, you know, this thing in December. It's about go time as we finish off. You see Will Worthington there, defensive lineman from Cedartown. Yes, his dad is Mike Worthington, the one that trains everybody in the weight room. Oh, that's fun. So, you know, Will has done some push-ups in his life. Oh, you know that's <laughs> the case. So, look forward to having these. I, I, I really enjoyed these eighth graders, and we've added a seventh grade game. I really like that we're just going to have those young men and, let them have a chance to play this year, about 30 players per team, and give them a kind of introduction, Brandon, to playing on TV. Absolutely. I'm sure there'll be plenty of fans that want to watch that. I know every coach in the state will be watching that close. <laughs> no, no doubt. No doubt. Gainesville up big, speaking of backs to right, 55 nothing over Shiloh right now. Creekside, you know, we talk a lot about them. Listen, they went out and played one of the best teams in the country. Modern day out in California didn't go well. But they came back home, had an off week, kind of refocused, and they are a legit threat in this classification 5A. How about Dalton on top of Calhoun right now? Good year for the Catamounts. They're just scrappy, man. Dragons of Jefferson putting up 56 tonight and a really fun one down there in the east part of the state. Benedictine on top of Wayne County. There's Tiberia again. Tiberia into Longhorn territory at the 45, and he's starting to find something. He's got a little, he's got a little speed with him, and they, they like running the ball to the right side. And you see Kell defenders getting pushed down the field. They're on the second level. They're doing a really good job. 
Tim Hardy, the GAC coach, you know, as you would expect, really stood on the table for Tiberia this week. And Jack Stan there as well saying he absolutely believes it's strange and weird that, you know, neither of those guys have kind of gotten the offers you would think they deserve. They played outstanding tonight, and this has really been in keeping with the season that they've had. Tiberia again, but the ball came free. And Kell has fallen on it. Wow. There to recover the fumble is Justin Logan, the Arkansas committed linebacker. They go counter, backside tight end. Great job blocking. You're going to see one the hit shift. right there. That's going to be number eight for Kell. Is going to strip that ball. Kamari Nix. Watch him rip in there and rip that thing out right there on the hit. And Justin Logan finishes it off. Big turnover forced by Cal. A word from Braden Pass Manager. Nobody wants unwanted gas taking up residence in their homes. And we're not talking about the in-laws. We're talking about critters. When it comes to keeping critters out of your house, there's just one company to call. That's Breda Pass Management. We certainly appreciate Breda Pass Management for its dedication to Georgia High School Athletics. Speaking of Georgia High School Athletics, Robin Hine, the executive director of the GHSA on hand for this game here tonight. Man, he was like a kid in the candy store as well. Reverse here. Now it becomes a flea flicker back to Clavon. Wide open is Baca. He's at midfield. Into Spartan territory inside the 40. Little trickery coming the way of Kev. Yeah, so it's the reverse to Zachary. Zachary flips back to Clavon for the flea flicker, and then Clavon it was throws the, the strike. It to was Baca. a delayed route. Vodka actually did the same exact thing, comboed block the defensive end, and then late release, but we've got a flag here. Yeah, it looks like we're going to back this one up. Illegal block in the back on the offense. 10 yard penalty, replay first down. Boy, you wonder about that. Not to say it's the wrong call, but it's going to be well out of the way of the play, right? I don't know. Oh, right there at the top of the screen. Oh, yeah. yeah that, that's a call. Can okay, you see good, that? Yeah. Because that's good the guys spotting. on the pass rush. Good spotting, Rusty. You're right. Yep. That's, yep. That, that's a really good point. Good yep. spotting. You cannot affect someone within that close of a pass rush. You knock them to the ground and. Maybe he wouldn't have got there, but that's an absolute 100% right call by this referee. You see Lee County on top of Northside right now. Tomorrow a big about, day, oh, yes, yeah, 6A in, in, in that part of the state Ooh, as Houston County takes on Thomas County Central. That's a strike by Clavon. Up to the 40. Peyton Zachary. So for people who don't realize, Houston County and veterans share the same stadium, Freedom Field. We were there a couple of weeks ago, and I guess it was uh, veterans night to have the Friday night game, which means one of the biggest games in the state this weekend is actually slated to take place tomorrow between Houston County and Thomas County Central. I'll tell you, that is a massive, massive game for Houston County. So we're going to come to the end of the third quarter. It's still anybody's game, but it's Kell with both the football and the lead. It's been exciting tonight, and the best could be yet to come in the final 12 minutes. So stay with us here on the Peach Tree Sports Network. From the baseline to the sideline, the best live sports from Atlanta and beyond are on Peach Tree Sports Network. The biggest plays, the instant classics, and the next rising stars are right here on Peachtree Sports Network, your home for live local sports. Are you over the age of 50 and considering buying an annuity in the next 60 days? I have some important news for you. Don't buy an annuity until you understand the pros and cons of annuities. Call now for this free book on maximizing your income in retirement. Annuity do's and don'ts for baby boomers from leading financial firm J.D. Melberg. That's right, free. This book reveals little known truths about annuities in simple to understand terms. Grab a pen right now because we're about to offer you this free book that unlocks the five little known truths we believe baby boomers and seniors should know before buying an annuity. And it's free. Call 800-474-0194. As a bonus, we'll also throw in a free annuity rate report. We researched numerous products and summarized rates and benefits of annuities, all from Silac Insurance Company. 
Call 800-474-0194. That's 800-474-0194. Call now. All right, we're here with Coach May heading into the fourth quarter. You guys didn't come up with points on that opening drive of the third, but you cashed in, got the turnover, you got the ball back in your offense's hand. What are you looking for and how confident are you? we got to finish. I mean, we're getting penalties that are killing us. We just had another big play call back on a stupid penalty. we we got to finish. we got to finish. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much, Coach. They picked up some big yards on second down. Good luck in the fourth quarter. Thank you so much, Craig Sager, Jr. and uh, Bobby May there, the uh, Kell coach who – Get straight to the point. I mean, it's just matter of fact, which I love about Coach May, one of the great coaches in our state here, and a guy that came over from West Lake here and has really done, you know, great here. And Clavon going to crank it up and throw, looking for Vodka again. What a catch by wow. Kyle Vodka at the 25 yard line. I mean, are you kidding me from the senior? You're talking about a contested catch. This quarterback just gives him a chance and watch Vodka. Reach, man, great coverage, but too much. Just a great tracking of that ball, and he had good coverage, man. Baca just finished it off. And then just running straight ahead, finding success in the ground. That's really, Tyree Green again. Really hard to defend that, man. It you really is. Two, you got two guys there. It's just Vodka was a little bit taller and longer, and man, Baca with a Nice catch, huge momentum play. That's the uh, handoff in the backfield. GAC player going to be slow to get up after the tackle. That was Kamari Nix. Yeah, so the tackler slammed him. I think he slammed his shoulder Vinay, Yeah, so Vinay, the linebacker, makes the tackle and he's the one that actually comes up worse the wear on it illegal shift on the offense five yard penalty replay so first down. while Vinay is being tended to here by some of the medical staff we will step away quickly and try to come back and give you an update on his condition as he's now walking off the field so quick time out from us and we'll be right back after this dang where you get this car you need to join the union the union? Absolutely. She can get 10 of these. Union construction workers earn the highest wages with the best benefits and the most protection in the construction industry. Find your career in construction. Go to georgiaconstructioncareers.com and start your future today. Hendrick. Drive now. Pay later. Shop HendrickCars.com this month and make no payments for 90 days. Over 20,000 new and pre-owned vehicles. No payments for 90 days. Visit HendrickCars.com. My marriage kind of took a different path. He told me he was not moving back into the home. My biggest fear was the unknown. What would happen with the children and myself? What would happen with the house? I found Meriwether and Tharp. They told me that they would walk me through this divorce and they did that tenfold. You need an attorney, you need the best attorney and that's gonna be Meriwether and Tharp. Great teams are committed, focused on the details and work hard to be their best. From practice to games, right down to their gear. Your field is a critical part of the game that allows your athletes to showcase their athletic abilities. Sports Turf is committed to bringing your team innovative sports surfaces with unparalleled performance. You bring the vision. Our team brings it to life. Okay, welcome back, everybody. Let's give you an injury report here brought to you by the uh, Governor's Office of Highway Safety, Jackson Vanai, who made a tackle there a moment ago was slow to get up, but eventually was able to leave kind of on his own power. So hopefully good news for him there on the injury front. There's Kamari Nick still dancing his way inside the 10. On his feet, still inside the five, down near the goal line goes Nix. Man, he looks really natural running the ball. Look how patient he is to let his wide receiver lead blocker get. Watch him set this up. Watch him bounce right here and let 23 take care of his man. He'll come back in and let him help him again. He's run right through that arm tackle. One time starting quarterback while Bryce Clavon was away with baseball earlier this year. 
looking at first and goal now after the next run. Clavon not in a hurry. Whistle blows. I tell you. Encroachment, defense, at the distance to the goal. First down. Come back and look at that. You know, Greater Atlanta Christian with some momentum, big play, and you fumble that ball, and you give it all back to Kale, the momentum. On what was a big gain as well. Yeah. And we yes, talked about, down. you know, Tiberia had really, yes, he'd really found something. Whistle blows again. Encroachment, defense, at the distance to the goal. First down. Second straight encroachment. The, at this point, the yardage doesn't matter a ton. They're right there on the goal line as it is. Just trying to do something to counteract that very successful Kell rushing attack. Clavon running back in from the sideline. Now they're going to quickly hurry up to the line here. Receiver goes in motion. Unbalanced right. Clavon still not hurrying. See that play clock is functioning, by the way. Hand off to Mooney Gibson. Touchdown. And Gibson goes in for the score. And Kell extends its lead. The freshman running back finds the end zone. Nice job blocking there. 70 and 52 just wall off the GAC defensive line. Going to give those big boys some love. 70. Yeah, Harold Giassi, yeah. 52 is Keenan Thompson. PAT now. Colin Mitchell puts that through and good. And now Kell looking at a 15 point lead, 35 20, with 9.51 to go in the game. But keep in mind, as explosive as GAC has been, we could be far from done when it comes to fireworks. So stay with us, everybody. Welcome to Georgia High School Heroes, presented by Ingalls. I'm Chris Bainbridge, and this season we're counting down the 10 best football players in Georgia high school history. And we're starting things off at number 10. A player who went on to great acclaim in the NFL as a receiver, Sterling Sharp played practically every position but wide out when he played for Glenville High School in Southeast Georgia. As a Bulldog, he played running back, quarterback, and linebacker from 1980 to 1984. In his 1982 season, he amassed 1,250 yards by himself. Sharp also played basketball and participated in track, where he held the Class A state long jump record with a leap of 23 feet 7 inches. He went on to play football at South Carolina, and his number two jersey is now retired after his incredible run as a Gamecock. He continued to impress in the NFL and resides in the Green Bay Packer Hall of Fame. Thanks for watching Georgia High School Heroes, presented by Ingalls. If you are on the fence about ordering McDonald's, consider this a sign. Mix and match a double cheeseburger, six piece chicken McNuggets, or small fries for just $3.69. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. In the world of football, every play can change the course of a game. In the legal arena, you need a team that's ready to tackle the toughest opponents. When it comes to the game, you gotta hit hard, never back down. And that's exactly <laughs> the mentality you need when it comes to your legal battles. The GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com drive for the GHSA state title is sponsored by the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers Local 613, Electrify Your Career, Gordo's, Fiesta Every Day, Personal Touch Lawn Care, the smallest details make the biggest difference, Merryweather and Tharp, Merryweather and Tharp LLC, the Atlanta Divorce Team.com, RS Andrews, story after story, we deliver smiles. And by Breda Pest Management, the official pest control of Atlanta. Welcome back, everybody. You see the score, 35-20. Kell on top of GAC in this battle for kind of control of Region 6-5A. We'll also see our scoring summary here presented by Breda Pest Management. Six plays, 71 yards. 
Almost three minutes of clock time. The Gibson touchdown, the capper on that. Here's Tiberi, already a long kick return today, but not quite doing there. And boy, you know, you're going to think about a couple of things for GAC. A couple of trips to the red zone to begin the game, and then what might have been if not for the Tiberia fumble just a couple of moments ago. Now, this was far from done. Oh, plenty of time here. You just think about the momentum on that. You're driving to likely have a chance to tie this thing up. Now you're down, you know, two scores and uh, just really, really just want to. Um, Kind of keep capitalized, get some, get some positive momentum here. Let's see our game's key defensive stop as well, presented by the Gwinnett County Sheriff's Office. It was the Tiberia run and the force fumble eventually fallen on by Logan, the linebacker. Kamari Nix again, though. Kind of brought that one loose. Made that play. Stanton back to work here. Rolling to his left, now coming back to his right. Got the block that he needed. And didn't get much on that, but prevented that from turning into a bad sack and a lot of lost yardage. That'll bring up second down now. No gain, second down. Yeah, he wanted to look for Gabe Daniels there. and. But there might have been a little bit of contact. He ended up on the ground in that route. This is a GAC team with 20 of its 22 starters from a year ago. That in part explains why they've been able to get off this 7-0 start. Here is Tiberia. Tiberia he hard. He yeah, falls hard. forward, gets the 40. So that's going to be about five yards to bring up third and five. And he really found a way to make something out of nothing on that. I can't remember his name, so I apologize. But West Forsyth had a running back a couple years ago. That's exactly who he reminds me of. Yeah, Tiberia kind of fits the mold of this GAC team. I mean, there's not, we see this in our open, like the on three, top 300 yep. rankings. Yep. You don't really see a lot of those guys. There are a couple of guys that do have some power five offers, but a little bit different makeup as the uh, pass is complete and then trying to fight and then oh, staying on his job. feet. How about the battle there by Hunter Bryant, the tight end? We have not talked about the tight ends as much tonight, but they've been a big part of this offense, and Bryant just got a huge first down for GAC there, but there is a flag down. Man, he refused to go down. Ten's got to wrap up, grabs his jersey, runs through that. Watch this one. Balance there. Just drives his legs, takes a big hit. Would have moved the chains, but we got a flag down. All right, let's see here. After the play, personal foul on the defense, 15 yard I penalty. wonder if that was a First shot down. to the helmet at the end. Okay. If we get that replay again, can we see at the end? I believe, not sure what, they, what they're calling the there, but at the kill, 39. took a shot to the, to the head. See if they call this right. Watch when he breaks 10. Once he breaks this tackle, he's going to watch the balance. Great move here. Going to watch five come in. Right have there. Got him right there. Yeah, yeah, may have got him right there. Either way, it's a first down with 15 more yards. Stanton stepping into the throw, Ooh. and it's incomplete. Braylon Burgess not able to hold on to that. Burgess already has a touchdown today. Stanton stepped into it well. Almost. Yeah. So that'll make it second down. Like the trainer stopping him there on the sideline. Don't let him go by. You want to check him out. And That's play right. Like that. That's right. Hand off to Tiberia. Tiberia left side spins. He's to the 33. He got about maybe five or six that time. He might be down a little bit, but the counter. Clock looking at eight minutes. Ball going to rest at the 34. See Tiberia talking to his huddle, talking to his offensive lineman. You see him. With his hand gesture looking like, let's go, guys, let's go. Line to make is going to be the 29. He said smash, so we're looking for some type of 
Maybe a concept right here, two-man game at the top. Three receivers on the right side. Tight end goes in motion again. That's Bryant. He had a big catch a moment ago. Stanton looking to throw again. That pass is going to be caught, and it's going to be like right on the line and good for the first down. So GAC moves it again. Another clutch throw and catch for Jack Stanton. Tight window there. This one going to Burgess. Seven twenty to go in regulation. Don't forget tomorrow, Georgia High School Football Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Wow. Eventually, get a chance to watch that on the Peachtree Sports Network. And for those of you who plan on joining us, we're thrilled to have you there for that. By the way, Cedar Grove impressive mm. tonight over Sandy Creek. Wow, replay of the state championship. Stan game. That's right, Stanton. Not able to connect with his guy that time, Gabe Daniels. That's going to bring up second down. Twice tonight they've run that same exact play, same area of the field, just unable to connect on that ball. Clock stops after the incompletion. How about Stan Rome coming back with that letter jacket? I tell you, that, that Valdosta Wildcats he better, not, he better not lay that thing around. I tell you right now, listen, I, I might pull the wallet out and just start peeling off, you know, dollar bills and trying to see what it would take would, to get rid of that. You, would you wear it on Monday? I believe I might. That's an artifact right there. That is an artifact if there ever was one. Here's a direct snap to Tiberi. I haven't seen this yet tonight. Yeah. And he's going to get near the 20. Got about eight or nine that time so third down going to be short here coming up third and short coming up what plenty of time what does the what does the the chart what does the chart tell you to do right here brandon do you go for two now or you wait for the second one if you were to score you know if it's me i'm going for two now with the thought i want her to go for two twice yeah I, I believe that's more of a breather, a breather timeout for that defense. Yeah. You know, it's almost like the theory in overtime of you want to know what you're facing, yeah. so you go for – this is obviously just my theory. You go for two now, and you know how many times you need to score after that. While we await to see what happens next to this football game, let's also remind you that there's a lot of things going on with Georgia's Rome, including inviting you to the chance to come out to the uh, – is it Chia? Chia hey, we don't play. Hey, listen. Chia that's a grown man. Chia ha. Chia ha. Excuse me. The Chia ha Harvest Festival, October 28th and 29th. It's a toe tapping, cider sipping, fun for everyone arts festival. I, I think fun I, to enjoy, difficult for me to say. I think I drove that truck home from Chia ha one day. Say it one more time. Chia ha. The Chia ha Harvest Festival. Chia ha. It's the fall festival held at the Coosa Valley Fairgrounds. You can plan your fun and get event details at RomeEvents.org. That's RomeEvents.org. There's also a QR code you can scan right there, too. Man, I tell you, a lot of days at the old Chia ha Festival growing up. I, yeah, I, I, listen, I love you know, at this stage of my life, we're doing football games all the time. Yeah. I don't get to go to festivals, but yeah. I, I love all those fall festivals. Oh, yeah, yeah. Especially when you're a kid. There's all kinds oh, of stuff to man. see. Oh, man. Counter again. There's Tiberia up the middle again, and he's just going to move the pile inside the 10. They're just pulling the backside guard and tackle. Um, and it's just a basic counter, and they're – Leading in, you see that tight end right there, 84, getting on five. Look at him drive those Kell defenders down, and it's a block down, kick out, and 84 is pulling that hole right in front of the running back. Yeah, one of the things that Tim Hardy told us this week is they like to have that kind of two tight end set. They feel good about both their tight ends. Same play, other flipped remote from formation. Tiberia jumping at the goal line. By the way, we're in the red zone here, presented by GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com. And Ty Beer are going to be stopped just short of the goal line. See what I like about this, Brandon. They're not – look at the exact same play. See 84? Man, physical well, contact at the I goal mean, line. Listen, he's trying to – he's throwing his body around left and right here right now. What a night Ty Beer has had. And more than shaking off the fumble he had a little earlier. There's also a man down here right now. They've got a guy. I believe that's the, the – the, Young man that was in on the tackle for that collision at, okay. at, at the goal line. Yeah, Tiberia went airborne there to try to get what he could get. 
We'll also take a moment to tell you about our friends at the Atlanta Falcons because it's football season back here once again, and it's time to rise up. Limited season ticket inventory remains, so you can select your seat today at atlantafalcons.com slash tickets. What is Falcons football? It's Grady putting quarterbacks on notice. It's Kyle shredding defenses like a unicorn. It's Tyler breaking tackles like phone screens. It's AJ locking down anyone on his island. It's Drake touching the sun. It's ZP breaking another record. What is Falcons football? It's all you dirty birds. Rise up. Welcome back, everybody. And, of course, uh, best wishes to the Atlanta Falcons. They take on the Tampa Bay Bucks on Sunday. Well, big game, man. Just really need to quiet some people, get the yeah. team back together, and get some confidence for Desmond Ritter. I would agree with that. Of course, uh, plenty to be confident about when it comes to the induction class for the second edition of the Georgia High School Football Hall of Fame, including Scott Werner, who... I wonder if he's going to have a tearaway jersey tomorrow night. I wonder if that's the case. <laughs> You love to see that. Ken Swilling, Pat Swilling there as well. Of course, Keith Henderson we talked to a little earlier. A lot of the families representing uh, some of the greats of all time there as well. You think Guy McIntyre's got some stories from the 49ers playing in a huddle with well, Joe Montana and Steve Young at times? Think about this, too. Like, how many of these inductees are Super Bowl champs? Guy McIntyre, we talked to Keith Henderson uh, uh, a little earlier. Yeah. Uh, Jamal Lewis won a Super Bowl with the Baltimore Ravens, right? Um, uh, Jeff Saturday won a Super Bowl with did, the. Did John Stinchcomb win one? John Stinchcomb won one with the yeah. New Orleans Saints. Speaking of leather jackets, what would that Marcus Stroud Sports yeah. Illustrated jacket uh, oh, be? Oh, I love ripping off what the Florida would you jersey. Think oh, that listen. thing would be worth. I, I, I'd absolutely take that. But quick to the line here, and then just straight ahead, almost the tush push style uh, Philadelphia Eagles look there, and that's going to be enough to get. GAC into the end zone. Jack Stanton gets the rushing touchdown, and the Spartans bite into this lead. Good job there, just moving bodies. I wonder if that play is going to be legal in five years. Yeah, I don't really see a good reason for it. I know there's a lot of controversy in the NFL. I don't really see a good reason for it not correct to be. Um, just a lot of discussion. And what's funny is, is that other teams try, and really only the Eagles seem to have, like, almost perfect success with it. Now go. they're going to go points. for two, as we talked about. See what This time it's kind of the fake handoff, and then Stan's going to roll around. Now he finds it, steadies himself to throw it, and it's incomplete, trying to connect with Xavier Daisy. So they kind of fake the handoff, fake the uh, look as if it would be a pitch. And Stan almost sacked, did a good job of steadying himself. Got the throw away. Just couldn't get it, couldn't get yeah. his feet underneath him to throw that. Cedric Franklin, the cornerback, had the uh, coverage. And good coverage it was. So you got three timeouts. If you're Kale, GAC has three timeouts. With 5.17 to go. Still time to get the ball back, but now you're down nine, Brandon. Yes, yeah, so you're still looking at two more scores here. That's why I ask. I mean, if you go for one there, you're, on, you're down But eight. it's still two scoring yep. plays, though, because yep. you still got to get the two-point conversion. And you also set yourself up. If you get the first one, you can get the second one and get the win, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, assuming you wanted to roll the dice that way. Looks like they are. They, are they trying the onside? Might be doing it. Yep, got to have two possessions. Yeah, let's see here. This is going to be Beckham to try this. They've kicked it short all night long. This may be a true traditional onside, though. It's kind of giving yourself that second crack at it, both in terms of the stoppage of the timeouts and this. They're gonna do they get the high nope. bounce? No, nope. they don't. You want that one more roll. You gotta have that big hop. Instead, it's a really good job by Ricardo Jackson just to uh see the football, grab it, and not allow any kind of miscue to be an issue there. Nice job on special teams by Jackson to haul that one in. Scoring summary, once again presented by Breda Pest Management. 11 play, 65 yards, 428 off the clock. Stanton, the rushing touchdown. 
All right, so Kel now back on offense. They've been pretty deliberate with their pace as of late, by the way, and you would assume they want to do that here right now. GAC can't stop it three times still. Yeah, wait do you then. start calling these right away? Uh, Yeah, I would think so. Is Corden, if they get what happens on first yeah, down, which now, is going to be the now, kind of stop they want it to be. Timeout. I would call timeout here. Because if it's second and one, you have to assume they're going to get a first down. Yeah. So you get, you're going to watch this. So now they don't call timeout. It's okay, but they don't call timeout. At 5.02, let's see when they snap this next ball. So Kel not in a hurry, of course. GAC creeping a lot of bodies up there near the line of scrimmage. Clavon checks his sideline again. Under four in the play clock. Clavon going to run it himself. He's dangerous when he does this. Sliding there around the 41-yard line. Right there, just about a yard short. Really more like the 40 three that he goes down at so now you're looking at third and two about to go under four minutes in the game I'm he's he's a tough smart kid but at that point you want him to fight for those two yards mm -hmm. you want to fight for those two and I know he's he's got different different potential with him but I'd right. like to see him kind of finish that when he get those two yards no, I think it's fair point 345 now, handoff to Green. Green bounces outside, and he gets the first down. Yeah. And that'll be our game's key first down, presented by the Atlanta Falcons. Tyree Green moving the chains for Kell. Appreciate the Atlanta Falcons bringing that. Got the nice block by his tight end, Ricardo Jackson. That's what springs him. With a win tonight, McKeeshran wins their region so over North Paulden. Impressive first year on the job for the brand-new McKeeshran coach. Yeah, Kareem Reed Kareem did a Reed. really good job there. Most recently of Florida in the SEC. Here's the handoff again. Kamari Nix continues to do it. He's been successful every time he's touched it. Now second two. About to go under two and a half minutes here. GAC hoping for the stop that keeps them in the game. Kell hoping for the First down that starts to make him feel it. it's Nick's again on the carry, and he's going to lose yardage in the yeah. backfield. Yeah, got to call timeout. Finally brought down by Zachary Ahmed, the linebacker. But big time lost yardage play. Yep. Had to have that one. And GAC does call the first of its three second half timeouts. See my high school teammate there with a white visor on, Ken Irvin, defensive coach, played ten and a half years in the NFL. Brandon, how about that? Brandon, he holds the NCAA record four block punts in one game versus Arkansas. Unbelievable, four in one game. That's unbelievable. <laughs> and he overthrew me in the state semifinals. But we won't bring that up. I, we, we've got past that point. I still love him, but every now and then I'll mention I was I was open, and he says, "Look, you're just too slow." But I think I was open, and he overthrew me. Of course, when Rusty says he mentions it every now and then, he also means on television here on a Friday night. Hey, well. I told him. I told him this week. I said, "Look, man, I love you. But I got to do my job now. If you get burned on them DBs, get burned. I'm gonna have to I'll have to call you out." But that's great. Both his kids went to GAC. His daughter played basketball at Syracuse. His son uh, ran track in Alabama, and uh, just a great, great human being. We share a birthday. We've been been pretty much best friends since sixth grade. One of our Hall of Fame inductees, John Stinchcomb's kids, also go to GAC as Correct. well. Correct. John's brother Matt also kind of a part of the kind of the feeder program here. Those, those, those two understand the scope of going in to yeah, something like this. I think that's right. 
you know, I think everyone does, but going in back to back year for your brother. That's and, right. You know, and it's really wonderful. Yep. All right, big third down here coming up. Vaca's in motion. That's Clavon wrapped up, and he's not. Oh, oh, be careful there. I don't know if they got it. Yeah, it looked like there might have been a face mask. Well, it was close. May not have been as may not have been what it appeared to have been. But either way, it's it's Clavon wrapped up in the backfield. He almost he got, got free. He's strong. He is. Look at the balance right here is where you're. Hunter, oh, I believe he got yeah, it. Yeah, Hunter I Bryant believe. had a hold of him, and they got free of that. Mm. And then it looked like Wharton may have gotten a hand on that face mask there. Yep. GAC got away with one right there, but hard to see some of those things in the – hard to see some of those things sometimes. Yeah, it's just a bang. I mean, we have the benefit of obviously seeing the monitor and completely different look at that. But definitely got away with one there. So, GAC with a one timeout left. And so now you're looking at fourth down. What's the decision here if you're Bobby May? You know, we've seen the quick kick punt from Clavon already tonight, although that would not go well. Yeah. But you can also, I mean, if you get the first down, I know it's 11 yards, but if you get the first down here, it's boy, ball game. beautiful look. I, to still think, I still think, in my opinion, you quick kick this because if you don't get it, you give them a so much better field possession. Clavon is coming back out, by the way. You're on the 38, fourth and 11. Or you just say, Bryce, I need you to run it, see if you can get 11. If not, go down. I don't know if you want to put the ball in the air right here, risk anything. So it's two receivers left. It is the quick kick punt. Yep. And it's going to take kind of a wobbly roll and end up being exactly what you want it to be. Like going dead, like right there at the oh, one yard line, almost at the goal line. What a night for Kyle you Vaca. Know, you know, yeah, Vaca's the one that gets down there and, and drops it dead. It's one of those things where it's, you don't want a pretty punt. You want the thing to be kind of wobbly and, and, and you wanna, bouncy and you can you want to hit kind of a fat exactly, nine hour. <laughs> exactly as that was. Got a flag and, down. Okay, let's see what that is. Let's hold here for this flag. After the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the kicking team. 15-yard penalty, play first down. Boy, that's tough if you're cannot, Kel because not have it. that's giving back what you really had, the chance to sort this game away with them in the back of the end zone. A lot more comfortable for GAC offensively with that ball now resting at the 15-yard line. But uh, nonetheless, we'll get ready to show you our play of the first game here. GAC from the 15. As uh, Valdas is going to get a win tonight against Camden County. Yes, How about that? That's going to – that's going to – here is our play of the game, and who else but Bryce Ooh. Clavon, 86 yards on the uh, touchdown run, and man, what a gear. Found the extra gear, a wonderful highlight for a terrific athlete, and a guy that's put on the show a couple of times here on television this year. The other quarterback, though, had a nice night there as well. Stanton throwing on first down, not able to connect with his intended target, Gabe Daniels. That'll bring up second down, clock a factor now. 152, and of course, as you can do the math in your head, GAC needs two scores here. I think when GAC goes back and watches this tape, they're going to understand a couple of plays here. That, but that big, that big turnover kind of switched all the momentum they it had. It really did, and you hate it because it was, it was a good play. Such oh, a good man, night. Yeah. Certainly, so, certainly not all on him. It just bad turnover at a bad time. 152 in motion. Stanton going to go down. Brought down on the play by Emmanuel Yulunfin. Yep, just beats, beats the tackle inside, kind of opens the gate. Kell is long on defense. They are long. Yulinfin is long. Yeah. Sabor is long. Just long body defensive yep. player. Justin Logan. Yeah. Third and ten now. Bobby May wanted a timeout and didn't Stanton get it. Stanton trying to set up the screen. Man, Bobby May was running down the sideline. Didn't like what they had. Trying to get a timeout. Still was unable to get it. And Kell was unable to convert there on that play. So, let's see Bobby see, May here. Yeah, he's watching. <laughs> he's Good trying. call, Rusty. Yeah. 
trying to get it and didn't get it. He's glad he Boy, didn't I get that. Look at that, man. If he catches that, they are wide, they are set wide open in the field. All right, so this pretty much is it right here. 73 seconds. GAC yep. needs a miracle. Watch five. Stanton will throw. It's intercepted. And that's going to end the football game for Tell. Back to the house for a touchdown goes Elijah Washington. And Tell is going to be standing on top of Region 6 and 5A. Don't believe you ever saw him, to be honest. And Elijah Washington with a big knockout punch, pick six for Kale, and likely region championship. This has been an excellent football game. Oh, and yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Both these teams had their chances, and you got to feel like both these teams are going to be very tough outs in the 5A state playoffs. 100% agree with that. And yet there can only be one winner, and tonight it appears that's going to be Cal with now just a minute, five seconds on the clock. And Rusty, we saw them week one, and we said, hey, it is a very tough matchup against a very good, a contending 7A team, right? Yep. Yep. I mean, Parkview is not just a 7A team, it is a 7A team. If you remember, they were down really big and came all the way back, got that thing within seven. And so I think we both said, hey, you know, we, I think we hope to do them on tele television again before the year was out. And then we thought they would be a major part of this 5A story. And they are. See Coach May telling his guys we need one more stop, even though you don't quit coaching. But the best non-timeout he has gotten all year was that right there because the next play, they go pick six. What a football game tonight, and what a collection of highlights I put tell you, together. I tell you what, he, he pulled me to the side for a few minutes before the game. He said, anytime y'all want to come to Kell to any game, we love this exposure for our kids. We love the exposure for all the kids on both teams, and he just gets it, man. Well, you know, Coach Hardy said kind of the same thing from GAC from the standpoint of, you know, he said, I feel like our team's fun to watch. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I think you and I both fans of the sport, but also enjoying the job that we do. You know, give me teams like this that are fun to watch, All that the are time. eager to be on television. Something about these coaches that has a little bit of an understanding of the entertaining part of the game, right? You know, they kind yeah. of understand that part of it, which I really enjoy. So, kick going to be brought back to the 35. I said it was going to take a miracle before. Really going to take, you know, something close to that here right now. Parkview gives Newton their first loss. Wheeler defeats Osborne in double overtime to give them their first loss. So if you want something of a silver lining here, I mean, by giving up seven on the pick six, the deficit's only 16, so you, it still theoretically can be a two-score game. Tied in once again there to make that catch, Hunter Bryant. Tough to bring down. Yeah, he really is. Now sitting at 47 seconds. If there, I'm going to give you a lot of ifs. If they could score quick, if they could get a two-point conversion, they would be in a position for an onside here still. But we're like four ifs away from. Yep. yep. We that's go. the middle of the field, yep. and that's a pass caught, and that's Burgess again. Burgess has had a nice night. We'll watch him kind of slip in there and get this. GAC at the 42. Stanton's been delivering all night long, and he stands in there again. Of course, we're in the red zone now, presented by GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com. Cool night now as well. Stanton rolling left, and he's throwing. And the we're about to run out of time here, but uh, obviously GAC going to play to the final whistle. Now just five seconds left. So it's going to be a Kell win. And it's going to be a phenomenal performance. Yep. 
seven straight now after a loss in week one and a commanding lead in region six of 5A. And people ask, why are you calling timeout? Because you don't want your kids to think you ever quit on them. There's five seconds on the clock, you're on the two. And here's, here's the long-term coaching thing with this, Brandon. These kids don't realize this, but Coach Hardy's going to look at this. This is a two-point play. That's right. What what can we do in a year from this point of the field? What can we execute? Get something extra on tape. And of I course, can't wait for Yeah, tomorrow, as man. we get ready to say goodbye to you here from the broadcast booth, we'll remind you that Rusty and I are both going to put on our blue jackets tomorrow. We'll get to be fans tomorrow. And be there for the Georgia High School Football Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Yeah, you better believe. A chance to shake hands with guys that I've watched on TV my whole life and some of these gentlemen I've gotten a chance to know here and I take that as a real point of pride because uh, I love football in Georgia and I love high school football in Georgia and I love the history of this sport even that predates me and my goodness uh, what a night we have as we bring in our second class ever to the Georgia High School Football Hall of Fame. So with five seconds left. A whip route. Nice. Yeah, nice play. Well yep. designed. Stanton throws a pretty ball yep. and that's a really good catch by Xavier Daisy who adds to what's a good night for him and um uh, it's a good GAC team, and they had, had a game effort here tonight. Watch this route right here. Lad McConkey ran that for a touchdown That's last right. year yeah, against LSU. Yeah. And almost like the Dominic Lovett score against Vanderbilt on Saturday Same as well. Play. But for tonight, the evening belongs to the Longhorns. The stockyard was rocking, and Kell is a winner. What a performance, and what a team to beat as you start thinking ahead to the 5A playoffs and the very likely number one seed that Kel and Coach Bobby May will take with it into the postseason. Of course, May working on his second year here at Kel. 10 and two a year ago. He's sweating. Sweat. Oh, they, it's they, a cold they, night. Did they, did they but that, get him, they but him with a Gatorade? They might have got him. He's sweating big time there. They might have got him with a well, if he got the, If he got the sports drink bath, he certainly deserves that Ooh. after the evening is put together. You see Craig Sager Jr. there as well. We're to, okay. <laughs> Gatorade is a sponsor, so I can't say that. It is Gatorade. Uh, that he'll, yeah, that's a Gatorade brand. It's a little different, different container tonight. I don't have to go generic sports drink on that. Yep, yep. Uh, you see a nice hug there from the athletic director. Uh, and it's a well-deserved moment here. A lot of happiness to be had, a lot of enjoyment. As Kale gets the win. Longhorns on top in Region 6 of 5A. And once it becomes official, assuming that it does at the end of the regular season, it'll be for Kell, the first region championship of this program since 2014. We're going to try to catch up with Bobby May. Bobby May also taking some time to hug on his kids, to, to, to gather around his team. He's enjoying this moment, celebrating the moment. And of course, we've been enjoying that all night long. Some of the great interviews like you've seen from us with our Georgia High School Football Hall of Fame inductees. Of course, eventually you get to see a lot of their speeches and the moments there at the College Football Hall of Fame, which is the venue for us tomorrow. And then moving ahead long term, how about the idea of, you know, a lot of the artifacts on display at Mercedes-Benz Stadium going That's forward? Be, you know, the, how the, about this one? Yeah. Nice job. Boy, hey, what, what a great scene that is. That's a true coach. got a play sheet and two kids. Yeah, play sheet, <laughs> a headset, and two kids. Somebody help him out with the headset there. I mean, I, I just, you can't put a price tag on that. Craig Sager Jr. going to be standing by here. The victory bell is ringing at the stockyard. Uh, what a great thing to see. Poor Coach May is going to come all the way across the field, both those kids. That's hard work right there. But nonetheless, he's a happy man tonight. Well-deserved victory. Craig Sager Jr. standing by with him right now. Craig, take it away. All right, I'm here with Coach May, a big victory. And this has been a huge stretch of your season, Cambridge win, GAC. What do you see in your team at this point in the season? I mean, we, we're just we're just resilient. We, you know, we have a lot of good players, and they, and they play hard. You know, we don't always play perfect. We make some mistakes, but they don't quit. You know, they don't quit, and they keep fighting. And, and we make a mistake, they don't hold their heads down, they keep going. And I thought you guys had a great drive to open the second half. It came up empty, but right before the fourth, you said you wanted to see your team finish. There's a really strong way to close it out. What did you see both sides of the ball? Yeah, I mean, on defense especially, we, we, we finished at the end and, and held them. Obviously, they're, they're a really good offense. They have some really good players. And, and offensively, even though we didn't score or hold the ball in that last four-minute drive, we held it for, for long enough to kind of keep it out of, out of range, you know, until under one minute. So I was excited about that with, with our offensive line leading the way and our running backs. 
You've put you guys in position to win your first region title in, I think, a decade. Yeah. How huge would that be just to bring the playoffs to Cal? Yeah, I mean, we're not we're not done, but we got we got to we got to finish these last two games and and get that region championship. Yep. Awesome, Coach May and the family. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back with our players of the game. Yankee Wawa. Running out of hot water is one way your water heater cries out for help. Call R.S. Andrews. Get a water heater rejuvenation. Your water heater gets added life. You get more hot water. Another way R.S. Andrews makes you smile today. I've used R.S. Andrews 15 years. Purchased two heating and air systems, so I rely on their technicians for service. I call, they come, it's fixed. And I appreciate Andrews' commitment. He gives it his all. That's how R.S. Andrews makes me smile. What does it mean when people say America is a land of opportunity? It means the power to discover. To redefine yourself. To improve yourself. To challenge yourself. To realize there's more in you than you ever knew that you could do. It means giving people an open field to explore what they do best. With the best tools. The best training. The best technology in the world. We bring out the best in the people who serve. So you can be all you can be. A journeyman with Local 85, when you turn out, you can be hitting six figures. Hey, I have your back, you have my back, we're going to do this together. We're, we're one for all, all for one. College just wasn't for me. Let's look into actual career jobs that wouldn't take college, where I wouldn't, you know, lose money and all that. Instead of losing a lot more money at the end, why not make money and make more money at the end? Hendrick. Drive now, pay later. Shop HendrickCars.com this month and make no payments for 90 days. Over 20,000 new and pre-owned vehicles. No payments for 90 days. Visit HendrickCars.com. Welcome back to the Tailgate Show presented by GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com. I'm with the Gatorade Offensive Player of the Game, Kyle Vaca, and the Gatorade Defensive Player of the Game. Touch on that. Kyle, I want to start with you, man. That first big touchdown, set it up, got the offense rolling, man. What did you see on that play? I seen the versatility in the game. They were lining up and running back, lining up a slot. What did you see on that touchdown? Yes, sir, for sure. Uh, we had a great week of practice uh, putting those plays in and installing uh, that type of formation. And I knew that they wouldn't, they wouldn't, they hadn't seen that before. So when I lined up a tailback, uh, we kind of thought that maybe they would emphasize me a little more, cover me a little more, and we could, we could break something open on a slot fade, maybe outside. But I went out there, motioned out, nobody was there. Me and Bryce kind of made eye contact, and the rest is history. History it is. And then well, I want to say, right. And I, w <laughs> and I want to ask you, Tyshawn. You guys had a great defensive tackle last year, Joshua Barker. What sure. were some things you just learned from him, um, just being kind of, you know, sophomore, some things he taught you? You had a big night tonight. What were some things you looked from him? Well, well, during games, I mean, listen to some ride wave, and, you know, let me stop. But I say just, just keep the composure throughout first, throughout every quarter, you know. Um, watch more film, too. That's, that's about it. And last question for you, I want to ask just, when you get it going, you had like two sacks early in the first half. Mm -hmm. You you, you know, you were making a big presence. What would you just see out there to be able to just be so successful and create pressure on the quarterback, not allow those big throws downfield? Well, you, we already we already had a game plan. We knew the we knew the uh, the guard was weak. I was faster, you know. That's about that's about it. Got you. All right, Kyle, I'm gonna go back to you, man. So big time week for you. You announced your commitment decision in Eastern Kentucky. You come out here, you ball out. This is how special it was. You said. You know, you, you was good friends with Jack. You just want to come out here and ball out with your teammates. How good was that to do that on the big stage? Man, God is good. That's really all I can say. God is good. It's been, it's been a crazy week. It's been an incredible week, and so much hard work gone in over the past few years. And this week, like you said, the commitment, coming out here with, with my brothers, with Kel, and, and playing against some of my buddies at GAC and sir. having a really competitive game and having a lot of fun, man. It's just God is good. Yes, sir. Well, let's end the week with the bang. Go ahead and present the Robbie Hunter MVP award to Kyle Vaca. Yes, sir. Congrats, thank Kyle you, Vaca. Appreciate Great it. game. Yes, Appreciate sir. The goat, the, goat, the goat right there. All right, guys, that's all we got for now. We'll be back on the other side with uh, Kaylee and Craig for the wrap up. Stay tuned. From the baseline to the sideline, the best live sports from Atlanta and beyond are on Peachtree Sports Network. The biggest plays, the instant classics, and the next rising stars are right here.
on Peachtree Sports Network, your home for live local sports. Power Nation is your source for authentic automotive how-to. Detroit Muscle, celebrating the passion and performance of Motor City Cool. Truck Tech, smoking the streets and tackling the trails are just part of highway hauling fun. Engine Power, it's high crank and performance with the science of speed and torque. And our newest show, Carcass, imagination, fabrication, and plenty of perspiration. Let the thrill begin. Power Nation. And we are back with the tailgate show brought to you by GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com. I'm Kaylee Mansell with Score Atlanta reporter Craig Sager. Craig, wow, what a matchup we had here tonight at Kell. What did you take away from the game? I think the versatility we saw with that Kell offense, the rushing attack. Uh, Bryce Quaven had that huge run, but they put up like 200 yards in the first half rushing just effortlessly, and then they left some points off the board, but then they end up putting up over 40. I think Kell is one of the hottest teams in the state right now. And we got to switch things up tonight, got, it, got the chance to interview some future Hall of Famers. What was that like? It was awesome. Uh, great attendance from them we're obviously going to see him tomorrow but i just enjoy looking at guys like jamal lewis i mean who doesn't remember him leading the nfl in rushing but just hearing him talk about his high school career his time at douglas it jogs your memory that he used to go up against the southwest of Cavs and those big rivalries and then you look at his college career he was an instant success and it's because he was playing high school football in georgia well, we had a terrific game tonight here at the Stockyard, but there were also a lot of great games going on across the state. So let's take a look at our scoreboard brought to you by Score Atlanta, starting with our 7A division. Wow, we got we watched North Paulding last week in a close one over Harrison. They lose to McEachern tonight. That region is completely wide open. And Newton, a team who was off to a 6-0 start for the first time in over 10 years, takes their first loss tonight to Parkview, who fell to Archer last week. Big recovery for the Parkview. Parkview Panthers. Yeah, huge win. That region is a complete log jam. And right now, Archer is leaving the region. Uh, no one would have seen that coming. Mm -hmm. So big games are all going to play each other coming up. And then McEachern, what a win over North Paulding. They both were undefeated in Region 3. And now the Indians, I think that's their sixth straight or fifth straight win. They are really hot. Taking a look at our next set of scores, Hiram with a huge win over Cass. I've been told to watch out for Hiram. They've got a lot of speed, super scrappy. They keep surprising us week in and week out. And Colquitt and Lowndes, the score doesn't reflect how close that game was the entire time. Colquitt County remains undefeated and is the team to beat in South Georgia, it seems. Yeah, they definitely piled it on in the fourth quarter. Uh, that's going to pretty much guarantee Colquitt that number one seed but you mentioned Hiram they must be leading the state in scoring this year every single week they're putting up 50 points another outstanding win great region right there and then Carrollton a team that we haven't talked about enough they're one imagine if they didn't lose that first one to Hughes on the last play everyone would be talking about them they'd probably be number one Absolutely. Moving to our next page of scores. Wheeler upsetting Osborne. Osborne was undefeated headed into tonight. Going into Walton next week, that could have been a setup for a major game. But Wheeler takes the win in a big W tonight. And another one that we were really surprised at how close the game was, was Mill Creek and Collins Hill. Collins Hill has not seen success since their state championship win a few years ago. And Mill Creek with a big win over Buford last week. They could be the team to beat in 7A, but Collins Hill keeps it close. Yeah, two of the more recent 7A champs squaring off. They're familiar with each other. And Collins Hill is a great defensive line so I'm sure that was a tough matchup uh, with that outstanding Mill Creek offensive line and their running attack and then great win by Wheeler I think Wheeler is a team in 7A that can uh, make it into the playoffs like advance score some victories they have an unbelievable rushing attack they beat an athletic Osborne team and Osborne still has to play Walton and North Cobb and moving on to our next set of scores, Rome continuing to impress, shuts out River Ridge tonight. They are one of the big, big teams to play in 6A this year. Same with Gainesville. They've been on our radar this entire time. They seem to get better each and every week. What Josh Niblett's done with that program in such a short amount of time is something that cannot go unnoticed, and he continues to prove how good that program is with the numbers he puts up. 
Absolutely. Gainesville, they look better and better every single week. And then Rome, that was a big one for them. Creekview scored a win uh, last night over Woodstock, so they're going to play for the region title coming up. I think that's next week. And then uh, we didn't mention on the last sheet, Douglas County, a huge win over East Paulding. Uh, really impressed the 6A team. And then how about Dalton getting a win over Calhoun to crowd that region up? And moving on to our next set of scores, the Jefferson Dragons. They are a team to watch, especially as we get closer to the playoffs. They get a big win tonight over Loganville and as well Benedictine. They're another team. They're a program that is just, they're all about consistency. The standard that they bring each and every year, they're always one of the top teams in the state, and they prove that again tonight against Wayne County with a win 38-21. Yep, and that will clinch uh, Region 3 for the cadets. They are the number one seed. Uh, Wayne County and Burke are going to have to battle it out for who's going to also have home field. Three top ten teams in that region, but Benedictine certainly uh, is the team to beat in 4A. And then LaGrange, uh, Trinity Christian was leading that region, and that's a big statement win. Uh, LaGrange was returning a lot of pieces. They did have a new quarterback and I think a running back come in, but talk about Matt Napier that coaching staff that is a big time win right there 42 14 over a great Trinity Christian team and looking at our last page of scores Sandy Creek Cedar Grove is a matchup that can go either way that region is so tough we end up seeing three out of those four teams in that region last year in the final four of the playoffs Cedar Grove they really set themselves up for success they play one of the toughest non-region schedules of anyone in the state and when it comes to region play it goes to show that what they do in before region it makes a difference absolutely in Cedar Grove you can just tell the the last few weeks the big win over Douglas like 66 to 6 and then this one both sides of the ball are clicking. Cedar Grove is looking outstanding. And then Elbert County, one week after beating Rabin County, serving them their first region loss in, I think, 50 games, Commerce comes out and gets a big statement win over them. So that's really going to shake up Class A Division I. Uh, shout out to the Tigers. That's a big time, big time victory. And that wraps up our scoreboard brought to you by Score Atlanta tonight. We will announce at some point this week where we will be headed to next Friday, but all eyes are on the High School Football Hall of Fame tomorrow, which will take place at the College Football Hall of Fame. Craig, what can be expected out of tomorrow? It's a great second class. We're going to have returning guys. I just think it's going to be a fun experience. And then anytime it's the second year, I think there's going to be improvements. It's going to run even smoother, and we'll be there really early to set up. So it's going to be a fun day. And as always, you can keep up with all the action on scoreatl.com. And as always, from myself, Craig Sager, Rusty Mansell, Brandon Adams, Najee Wilkins, IJ Rosenberg, Roddy White, and so many others, we wish you all good night. Enjoy some college football tomorrow, and we'll see you right back here on the Peachtree Sports Network next Friday, 8 p.m. Line, to the sideline, the best live sports from Atlanta and beyond are on Peachtree Sports Network. The biggest plays, the instant classics, and the next rising stars are right here on Peachtree Sports Network, your home for live local sports.